And we're back! Welcome to the Shady Hop with me, Little Fox. <sighs> back again with the season of the dragon. Although this time I'll probably be doing the actual stuff. <laughs> <sighs> How is everyone today? Good, apparently. She said into an empty room. Love! Oh wait, do I have sound? Oh wait, do I have sound? Yes. Gonna hide that player. Yes. Alright, why is it taking so long today? I have no patience today. <sighs> doing my daily grind, and then I'm gonna be doing some... ...missions. Claim. Cities are as alive, fickle, and uncertain as people. Some are good, some are bad. Some give you gifts, others rob you blind. Oh my goodness. I'm looking forward to the I am looking forward to the this year's update, even though, you know, it's gonna be the result of crunch. Oh well. Just makes me a terrible person. Why is my ping so awful? That's awful. Oh, no, it's better now. Okay. Still seems to be a little bit glitchy. I really need to level her up. Oridon chat being Oridon chat. Oh. I need to get something. Alright. 
Mm. <sighs> Sorry. Ugh. I had to take my medication. Just realized I'd completely forgotten it. People are weird. Seriously, people on... People being weird. Oh shit, I've got up to 1.1k Lorcan's tears, that's hilarious. Mm, pardon me. Let's check these, see if I've done them all right, yes. Also, I've got messages. Oh, and one of my items was sold, which one? Ah, the venomous dagger. thinking of seeking trading partners in Volquaston. <sighs> I sunk some coin into a farm a few years back. I'll have to speak with my man in Gleamwalker. You sell those at market. My cousin could use a set. Hey, oh, I leveled up. Very nice. All right, well, in that case, I need to open up my spreadsheet. Leveled up.
people flexing in chat over how much they've spent on microtransactions. Incredibly. Incredibly. Oh, it's a purple one. What the fuck was that? Oh, it's my dude. It's my little my little pet dude. All of the battleground games involve combat. I love cities. The rude people, the noise, the chaos. Is it strange that I find it comfortable? Welcome, friend. No, oh, no. Fuck. Oh, hey, Judge Bear. How are you? Dang it. Monsters? Villains? Hey, no. What's the trouble? It's like 11 p.m. Hey. <laughs> 11 p.m. It's late. It must mean you're like somewhere to the west of America, maybe? All your Br ish. Oh yeah, my my boy, my um, my partner's um, my partner's British, or at least he calls himself British. I mean, he's Scottish. It confuses me. I know technically he's British, but still, what's on your mind? It's a weird flex. Yeah. <sighs> Hmm. Ooh. Gujarati. That sounds interesting. 
That's really interesting. Northwest Indian state. But you're in you're in Britain. Things are um interesting in India right now, I hear. Well, things are things are going crazy everywhere. Stay everywhere. It's spooky. All the stuff's going on right now. You get a genocide and you get a genocide and you get a genocide. <laughs> yeah. The You'd think that they'd learn that you'd think that India would uh, want better after being under British rule for that amount of time. But, yeah. Fucking hell. <sighs> hmm. Come on, load! <laughs> load! Fuck you, game. Fuck you, game. I'm only gonna pay half as much attention. Well, a f maybe a ten percent attention to you now, and instead react to videos. Do you like that, Elder Scrolls? You brought this on yourself. Did Freemasons kill the unicorns? Are whales bears? Seriously, answers in Genesis is fucking awful. Colonial rule had some part to play in the antagonism going on amongst uh, religious groups. Yeah, I, I would. Yeah, I. I would say that 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 would probably be very true. Mm. All right. So Forrest Valkai, I've spoken to about him on the channel before. He's uh, does some amazing videos, talk, like reacting to um, uh, creationists. He is a he is an evolutionist. <laughs> No, no, he is uh, a I, not an evolutionary biologist. He is a type of biologist, but um, he makes really amazing videos about evolution. Um, I definitely recommend his channel. Fair use. 2023 is upon. I'm just a community. It's a new year, a new opportunity to learn new things. And is that a Patreon jumper? And try new get, things get and Patreon merch. New like Patreon, so let's Patreon all get merch. Ready for something new. Hey everybody, welcome back to the longest running series I've ever done on any platform, Reacteria! Woo! Today Reactoria we're going to take a look best. at this video from Answers in Genesis titled This Drives Evolutionists Crazy, But It's True. This was actually just published a couple of days ago, but already several of you have sent it to me asking to respond to it. But I'll be honest though, as much as I would love to be driven crazy for a change, I'm not super confident that this video is going to do the trick. One of the last episodes of Reacteria was responding to Ken Ham, the head of this very organization, who said that he would awful. drive us all crazy by simply just flatly denying that the age of the universe is what it is. I watched that whole video and all I got was bored. But maybe this one will be different. It's got an active comment section with lots of positive feedback. It's got an impressive view count for as long as it's been up. So let's take a look at it and see just how crazy we go today. Before I do, however, I've got to thank my patrons on Patreon. A quick, quick side note. Uh, Answers in Genesis creates school curriculum material for um, my the school my uh, nephews are currently going to. Yeah. <laughs> for making this whole channel possible, and the sponsor of today's video, Blinkist. Blinkist is an app that takes non-fiction books and breaks them down into bite-sized chunks. So this sounds weird. Wait, this whole Blinkist thing sounds weird. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, it, 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 it makes me anger, ang, angry. 
It makes me angry. And the key points of the books in just 15 <laughs> minutes. Now, I never want to encourage anybody to take the easy way out on education, so I actually tried Blinkist for a couple of weeks to see if I liked it before I made this video, and I was surprised by how well they were able to summarize so many arguments from so many different titles. I listened to several books that I had already read before, and a few that were new to me, and in both instances, I learned something new, and it made me want to go back and read the rest of the book to get more details. And there were even a couple of books that I quickly learned I had no interest in, so that saved me hours and hours of time that I can now invest in reading something that I actually like. And that's why I really- Yes, you, the, you saved you hours and hours of time that you can now use to create more capital. <laughs> like it doesn't replace reading- Be books, productive! More production! ...and allows you to learn new stuff in rapid time, and then you can decide what you want to dig into further. And with over 5,500 different titles to choose from, there is lots to explore. Plus, with their new Blinkist Connect feature, you can share your premium plan with another account at no cost, so you get two premium plans for the price of one. By opening the door to thousands of new ideas, Blinkist can help you be who you want to be in 2023. Me personally, I want to be an alligator juggler, but there aren't any good books on that yet. So head over to Blinkist.com slash Labs to start your seven-day free trial. If you like it, you'll get 25% off Blinkist Premium, plus two memberships for the price of one. Thanks so much to Blinkist for sponsoring this video. And with that, let's give Answers in Genesis one more chance to drive us crazy. For over 100 years now, naturalists have been pointing I'm already to the there, Forrest. evidence of evolution. I feel like this could help with reading on educational materials in terms of me just heading how I'm going to I don't know how I can really summarize. Yeah, that's my thing. It's just like... I don't know who the people are who are who have like curated this stuff and like because as soon as you filter it through another person it's going to give a certain bias to whatever it is like you can't not pass on some form of bias even if you use ai you know ai is still going to use the bias of whoever programmed it and whoever it was trained on so like there's always going to be bias there so it just I don't know, it's weird to me. Unless it just like split, it just spat out the blurb of every book. <laughs> That's all it was, someone reading out the blurb. To the West's population. Honestly, I find it better to, like, um, if you, this, uh, let me just introduce you to a channel quickly. Um, this is one of the best channels I've had, like, at least from, like, me being an anarcho communist. Like, um,. <sighs> Radical Reviewer um, is one of my favorite book reviewers. So, like, YouTube book reviewers are really interesting. Now, yes, you some of these videos are going to be up to, like, up, like an hour and a half. Um, ooh! Why did I not get any fucking notifications for this? Far out. There's a new one, The Fountain... It, like, he's reviewed The Fountainhead by Ayn Rand. Also, all of the videos are hosted by a dog. Uh, like, a very cute... The Radical Reviewer is 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 a very cute puppy. Um, let's have a look. Um, but... One of my favourite... Um... Uh, he does some React videos as well, but yeah, uh, let me just quickly first link this guy in chat. But if you're looking for book recommendations, and and what what helps me is actually having someone explain the book. So kind of like, like Blinkist, but you'd be listening to like a half hour to an hour video um about someone talking about what the book says i just like i can i can i can get a gauge on a person's bias through half an hour of watching their videos and if i've especially if i've watched several of their videos i can get a better gauge on their bias and then like sort of like weed through what i like um also, he's uh, he's had um, Bow of the Fifth Column, Lance from the Serfs. He's also had uh, uh, Peter Coffin um, on his channel before, but uh, you know that was a long time ago and hasn't had him on it since. Um, but yeah, definitely good. Ah, oh, here we go. This is my favorite one. This is my favorite one. 
is is this review who well Yes, you saw the door open for once. Haha, uh -huh, I'm playing with fire. Alright, so I I this yeah. video led to me actually buying the uh, a physical copy of this book, but I also also Yes, he is adorable. The entire thing, hold on, let me just play it for a second. Mad sec. Bender? No, Mad Blender. Oh, Mad Blender. I've oh, I thought it was Mad Bender. Dumpster flowers. I've never talked to a Mad Blender before. No, Rad, it's me, Leslie, from the channel Mad Blender, remember? Oh, hi, Leslie, that's right. We were gonna... I, I had the order, 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 the audiobook. So, da David Harvey is, uh, again, I recommend this book. It is amazing. It's also very depressing um, because it talks about some of the contradictions within capitalism, which could, could lead to the total collapse of society by... Um, 2030 um yeah which is depressing um but it also really really succinctly um explains a lot of really interesting marxist points it is beefy but i found it really much easier to watch this video and get a very rudimentary outline in my brain of how the book is structured, then I listened to the audiobook, and then I read the book itself. 100% um, recommend <laughs> reading. It's a good read. But yeah, this is how I get book recommendations. Also, like, yeah, I, I need to do, like, a book recommendation list. Like, because, although it's only going to be two books long at this point, because I take ages to read stuff. But if you're wanting, like, an easy read, um, um, I'm just going to show you the audi Audible uh, version because I, I actually recommend this book as, as you know, the audi aud audio book. I know, you know, I'm, I, I'm not, I'm not, um, I'm currently listening to, I've got, I've got Dark Emu, um, which is, uh, which is a book about um, the, I guess, sort of untold history of um, Aboriginal history in Australia um, and how um, Europeans kind of fucked a lot of shit up. Um, I've got Escaping the Rabbit Hole by Mick West. Haven't started it yet. I've started The Shock Doctrine by Naomi Klein, of course. Um, we Too is really interesting as a sex worker. Um, uh, it, it hearing, it, it's a book of, uh, it's a compilation of essays and stories told by sex workers in the wake of the Me Too movement and how we weren't really included in that. <laughs> um, yeah. And then uh, Beyond Good and Evil by Fr Friedrich um, Nietzsche. I, I just got sick of hearing people bring up um Nietzsche and uh um nihilism uh and talking about that as if that is the the end of philosophy you know what i mean like philosophy, you know philosophy uh, never grew past Nietzsche well yes it did grow past grow past Nietzsche that's that's what um marxist dialectic dialectics is today um yeah, but uh, a, an easy read is Cultish by Amanda Montel. Um, really interesting. I find it so. I find it really interesting to use what I've learned from this book um, about to to apply it to the in internet spaces, basically. And so it's not about cults. This book is not about cults. I mean, it does... It, it is about cults, but it's dissecting the language. So Amanda Montel is a... Uh, 
I need to I need to explain exactly what it is. She's a, a writer and language scholar. Um so she 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 actually studies language itself rather than um Oh, she did a Spanish version of Cultish. That's awesome. Um, but she's talking not about that she's... you. I want to look at, into the stuff written by Bell Hooks as well. All about love. The will to change men, masculinity, and love. That looks interesting. Oh, audio, audio. it's on Audible. I could probably get, grab this one. Bell Hooks. Ooh, she's in, she looks interesting. Cultural critic, feminist theorist, and writer, celebrated as a leading public intellectual. Hundred, hundred. Mm. So as soon as like, um, as soon as the media starts praising people and putting them in the hundred visionaries that could change your life, I'm just like, wow. But Bell Hooks. Ooh, she's good. Oh, com oh, I thought that was communism. You you made me excited for communism. The female search for love. Feminism is for everybody. Passionate politics. Teaching community. A, a pedagogy of hope. Ooh. Do you know what annoys me? Is that uh, the right has taken the term uh, pedagogy to, like, say, pedophile. Um, when talking about uh, tra uh, the LGBTQIA plus community, it's 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 really shitty. Critical thinking, practical wisdom. Yeah, I I uh, I I'm kind of looking at this, <laughs> abolishing racism and eradicating sexism must go hand in hand. Yes, yes. Systemic problems. Yeah, that's good to know. Um, I'm going to leave these here, and, uh, I'm just going to leave this video here. I'm trying, what I'm trying to do is leave the videos up so that I actually have a reference for later when I do my, um, when I cut my videos. Oh yeah, if you're interested as well. I should probably set a bot up to do this, but I have a YouTube channel. It's not... Um, I, I don't tend to put videos, like, short videos. Like, for the most part, I've... Uh... Oh, shit, my, uh, <laughs> my music playlist is up here. Lol. I've got 15 on ADHD ear candy already. Lol. But, yeah, um... I update, I upload um, my um, Twitch streams to my YouTube channel. I, I do like the smallest amount of cutting out the, you know, back. I cut the back soon and the start and the end. <sighs> um, so yeah, feel free to join up there. It's at TSH uh, Little Fox. So. Yes. How do I share this? I'm going to share it in chat. Oh, thank you. Yeah, this is why I need to put a bot up, because, like, people, um, it, it helps people out to have reminders and stuff. Also, I, I really want to show you, show you this this hilarious uh, thing. Um, uh, so I reacted to Bad Empanada um, yesterday and on on um, you know Thursday Thursday night. Um, and <laughs> Bad Empanada responded like he actually commented on my video. Which um, gave me one of the like I I don't know if he knew if I don't know if he responds to people because he knows that it makes them feel amazing, um, or whether he's actually serious or whether he's just shit posting. I don't care. Like, just that that just made me so happy. You know what I mean? Um, YouTube. I wonder if this is this will work.
Oh my gosh, it worked. Oh my gosh, it worked. All right, cool. This is an easy, easy link. I don't know. I don't know. This is weird. Why is this turned off? Oh, I just turned off. I don't know why this is turned off. Okay. Ah, uh, okay. Ah, uh, maybe. I mean, I would. I would. I think that's awesome, though, like, you know. I don't know. I, I think that's pretty awesome. Um. Wait, let me find the. Let me find it. Um. Like I, I don't want to. I, I'm like, I, no beef, no beef. Um, I, I honestly, I'm, I, I uh, said this to a few people who didn't know who, um, who, uh, Bab Panada was outside of his historical um analysis, which, uh, is amazing. Um. This oh that was the latest one. Where is the? Oh, because it's out of order. Damn it! I I everything is out of order because I've been um, uploading them like in weird order. Of, um, I've got a. So for some reason it got hit, but yeah. This is this is my favorite thing. Like. I, I absolutely love this. I absolutely fucking love this. Wait, can I like this as well? Yes. Ah, oh, This beautiful. Drunk talking equals rape and patriarchy, misogyny, male privilege. Ah, oh, you are racist. <laughs> you are an AI raised on Tumblr. I hope next time someone cancels on you while you're about to arrive, you don't feel any negative emotions or this rape and coercion. <laughs> I mean, like... <laughs> I love it. I love it. This, no, no shit. Um, it is a gift. Like to me, this is this is this this just warms my drama loving degenerate heart. Like, I I love this. I love this. I I honestly think I honestly think that he's shit posting. Like I honestly, I watched I watch like almost all of his videos as they come out i check his i check his um i i the only thing i don't do i'm not on is i don't know if he has a uh, discord or any other community funk like uh, things uh, i w i read his community posts and that always gives me a good laugh um but like i've been following him for so long and just to me it's all shit posting and as far as I'm concerned, this whole space is theatre to me. It is, it, it's not practice, it's theatre, it's entertainment. We are all entertainers. Um, and obviously a bad empanada um, entertains and also, you know, informs. Like his historical videos, uh, I don't think I've ever seen anyone come to his level. Um, other than Forest Valkyrie, um, but that's a different different area of science. Obviously, it's not historical. It's, it, 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 I mean, technically, I guess you could call um, uh, evolutionary uh, biology like um, historical in a sense that there is a history behind it. But like, it, it's archaeology, and it's like a whole whole bunch of other fields crossed into into it. So like, um. But yeah, that 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 his ability to inform and make a point—it's just yeah, like his his videos are solid. It's just like outside of those videos, he's he is a shit poster. He is a expert shit poster, and uh, I have I personally have mad respect. Um, but yeah, like I I think I think his 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 response uh, to my criticism um which i don't know if i've made it clear it, it, it's very light criticism of the misogyny around his interaction with kevils it's the kind of misogyny that everyone has 
growing up in a Western patriarchal society in which we are taught normal, we are taught what is normal. Like, his reaction to that situation was normal. It shouldn't be normal, but unless someone's been made aware of uh, these things and has chosen to, um, you know, work on them, um, that that's just what people are like. No, no, I didn't. I didn't. He's like, yeah, and drama gets him views. There are a good amount of people who just hurt the current. Yeah, no, like I, 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 I have no, I have no issue with securing securing the bag. Like, secure the bag. It, it, like as he says, like the one of the things I respect Bad Empanada the most for is the way he talks about the online space. Like that that I've taken that to heart, and that's why I talk about it a lot because it matters to me to like keep on drilling it into people who like watch me, even though like it's a small community, it's a small amount of people that watch me. But I just want to drill it into people's heads that, like, just to try and create online literacy. Yes, yes. Uh, but, like, I, 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 I have no problem with people who think that he's a cunt. I have absolutely none. And I don't want to change people's minds. I don't really... I, I, if you watch me for, like, enough, like, like more than five minutes, you, you'd know that, like, I... I don't want to change. I have no interest in changing minds. I want to find like minds because that's much more practical in today's age. Like we have the internet. I can I can put out a message to the entire fucking world. Why the hell would I waste my time on some like fucking Nazi? I don't know, a couple of streets up who's never going to change their mind. Why Why bother? Create communities worldwide. Try to create communities in your immediate space, and yeah, like those sort of things are more important to me than changing minds. And I and I, and I don't and I think it's perfectly legitimate for people to be to feel insulted by some of the things that that Empanada says because like he tells it like he feels it, and I'm not. That's not. That's not a. That's not a. Uh, uh, virtue that's just how it is <laughs> um and yeah just 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 what it watches historical videos if if you have a problem with his online presence just ignore his online presence yeah i mean i i go i do i i do debate i do debate debates with uh, fascists but that's because i'm trying to build a platform if i had a platform yeah fuck them I'm just, I'm more pissed off at the moment with, with, uh, basically the, this whole, like, um, in-group, out-group, leftist, uh, leftist, uh, libfash space. And I was talking to a friend, like, and I used the term libfash, which I don't know if it's been used before, but that's kind of what I've started calling the Vorsch community. Um, I don't know what. Vorsch's uh, politics are, I don't really care, but the community is very libfash, and it's, and I call it that because there's a crossover between liberals and fascists um, now, where, careful, the carefulest video we watched yesterday goes into detail talking about how, um, this, the, with Destiny's community, there's, like, he's friends with Lauren Su Sutton, he's friends with, like, Nick Fuentes, he's, like, got relationships with these groups, and there's, there are audience crossover with actual fascists, and that didn't happen all at once, that happened over time, like, Destiny started moving towards this thing, that, that because his community, and, like, I'm not gonna call it a grift, because fucking, this is, this is, this was his job, um, his audience informs his views as much as he informs his audience's views. We've got to look at this as a dialectic rather than, you know, a causal relationship. His audience and the way he made money, Destiny, was to create this, um, idea that you could uh, de-radicalize people on the far left and the far right, as if that was something that is a viable 
uh, option. What that did, though, is it just allowed fascists into the Destiny community and just created toxicity, which was profitable. And, of course, we are incentivized to do the most profitable thing. Like, Destiny is simply a a symptom of an issue. Now, I can see the same thing happening with Vorsch. Because, like, it's the same thing. It used to be Destiny was the, was the, was the Weinstein of uh, the Twitch leftist space. Now, it's Vorsch. If you do not... If you don't suck up to Vorsch, then you do not have a platform as a minority or a woman. As a minority, if you don't suck up to Vorsch, then you do not have a platform. Um, that's just how it works. And then you've got the whole Weinstein, like, um, sexual sexual assault to allegations and all of that stuff in line with uh, Vorsch. But yeah, live fash. Um, it basically means two things. One, you've got a crossover between liberal and fascist uh, communities, so that if you basically um, get caught in the crosshairs of Vorsch or Destiny, you then get caught in the crosshairs of actual fascists. Like, like I, I, I said, like I would rather, I would rather be harassed by, um, by Bad Empanada's audience. Um, than Vorsch's audience, because Vorsch's audience is actually fucking dangerous. Like, there is some actual fucking danger there. I, I mean, I don't give a fuck either way, that I'll play- I, I will play the game, um, and, uh, work on getting the clout that, um, I need to, like, try and succeed. Um, hopefully until I don't need to do that anymore, but who knows. Um, but yeah, you can't really deny the fact that Vorsch's audience, Vorsch, send, Vorsch encourages his audience to harass people, um, especially minorities, that disagree with him. Uh, he actively encourages these things, and so does Destiny, although Destiny is much more, has much more of that uh, fascist crossover. And so that comes to the second reason why I call them libfash, is because if you do not subscribe to this liberal Western leftist mindset, like le this liberal um, Western mindset with leftist aesthetics, if you do not um, fall in line with that, then you are called schizophrenic. You are called the arsler. You are, you know, subjected to constant abuse, um, and you are considered subhuman. Like I'm just repeating things that Vorsch himself has said. Um, in fact, like I, since I, as a trans person, disagree with um, Vorsch, um, he has already said that he um, thinks that I should kill myself. So, yeah. People, well, people like me, so, me. Which, I don't know how to interact with someone like that on a, like, uh, amiable level. How am I supposed to feel about that? Which is why I can't really feel like I can criticise Keffels too much for playing the game. I don't know if she's, I, it doesn't matter, I'm not, I, I'm not, like, I don't really care about her intentions or, like, whether she, like, if, is acting in a certain way to get a certain audience, uh, whether she is or not, it doesn't matter, because that's the only way she's going to have the, keep the audience that she has now, is by not going against the grain. Uh, the thing is, audience will trick themselves into thinking they have changed their far-right views, when in fact they have not done the slightest bit of work to unlearn their biases. They think that dogmatically following Borsch's opinions means that they've changed. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of things. Um, that book I recommended earlier, Cultish, right? Cultish talks about this stuff. Like, the way that communities create use cultish language and like the language around fanaticism fa like it's a brilliant book for looking at communities like Vorsch's community like destiny's community like they're really it's really really informative when it comes to that so can't recommend it more but we've like completely uh sidetracked let's let, let's have a, watch a fun video about uh, evolution <laughs> 
in declaring that it's obviously visible to those who aren't so blinded by their doltish and <laughs> foolhardy commitment to religious beliefs. This motherfucker want to be like um, Bill Nye or some shit? Right? I mean, how can you not believe in evolution when natural selection can be observed? Right? Right? And so aggressively has this notion been put forth in an effort to avoid the embarrassment of seemingly intellectually deficient, even many in the church have obediently smiled and nodded obeisance to this cloak of invisibility donned long ago what? by the no. story of. No, 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 no! Like this is just this is just science. Evolution. This is just science. The increase in belief in evolution that we're seeing amongst religious people is not because they don't want to seem stupid. It's because they're not stupid. Religious people are finally being exposed to the overwhelming and undeniable evidence for evolution at a rate that makes it difficult for organizations like this to withhold it from them anymore. So for the exact same reason that religious people believe anything about science, they are now starting to believe in evolution more and more. For example, just 400 years ago, Giordano Bruno argued that the sun was just another star, similar to all the others. He was imprisoned for years and ultimately burned at the stake by the church because that idea goes against the te mm -hmm. teachings of the Oh, Giordano, sorry. I, I, I thought he was talking about um, uh, Galileo. The story of Galileo is, very, is much more complicated than um, we're really taught. Similar to all the others. He was imprisoned for years and ultimately burned at the stake by the church because that idea goes against the teachings of the Bible, which is um, yes, but never. Okay, this is like this is one of the things. Like this is one of the reasons why the whole Galileo thing was complicated. Never assume that the church, as an entity, did something. There's no pizza in Genesis. Pizza isn't real. <gasps> no. Ooh, but what about the flat earth that's kind of like a pizza <laughs> is that in genesis but like never assume that the church as a entity does anything because of religion the church historically speaking does things because of politics and uses the Bible as an excuse in order to act out those politics. Yeah, it's, pol it's a political tool. So, like, it, it, like, Forrest is not wrong here, but it is a reduction in the actual truth of what this happened. Like, in the case of Galileo, like, I am gonna mangle this because i'm just going on my memory here and um I, I, yeah i wish i had everything in front of me and i had all of my references everywhere everything all at once good movie you should watch it um but galileo was not accept like his views weren't accepted and he was persecuted by the church because of the politics around the things that he was saying and the way that the church wanted to um in to uh preserve the status quo not because of anything the bible said if once galileo's views became profitable for the church then the church accepted it basically it, it's it's basically if it's profitable for them to do so then they will do so like it's not about religious zeal the people with religious zeal are not at the highest echelons of religion the people at the highest re echelons of religion are politicians the people with the highest zeal and belief in what the Bible says are the foot soldiers. So the people, like in Answers in Genesis, like the creationists, that sort of thing. Like they are wanting to you the the they believe truly believe in this stuff. But the people who are bankrolling and um, controlling this stuff from the highest echelons of these groups are doing that because they want something physical. And material not about treasures in heaven antithetical to what jesus you know actually taught you know we, we don't we 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 
don't build treasures on earth on earth we build treasures on heaven like in heaven like sort of thing so like it completely kind of destroys everything that the church stands for today funny that exactly why answers in genesis still rejects it today another reason that bruno was killed was because he said that the earth goes around the sun not the other way around that also goes against the teachings of the Bible. But Answers in Genesis has found a way to tweak their interpretation of the scripture to make that one make sense. Why? Because enough people understand that so they can't lie about it. The only reason why people understand these things about science is because education finally beat out indoctrination. We don't talk about Bruno, no. Nah, I'm just kidding. They do talk about Bruno. They call him a heretic and a mystic, and they say that it's honestly surprising that it took so long for the church to kill him, although they don't condone that. But does natural selection equal evolution? No, natural selection is the mechanism by which evolution works, in the same way that internal combustion is the mechanism by which a car works. But if I was talking about engines, I wouldn't have to I love the way he explains that evolution. I really actually mean cars or that I'm only talking about the engine in the same way that if I was talking about natural selection, I really wouldn't have to say whether or not I meant evolution as a whole or just this mechanism, unless I'm like teaching a class, I guess then I would break it down. Why are you making this so difficult? You see, because natural selection is so equated with the story of evolution, and biblical creationists, of course, don't hold to the evolutionary story, many people are often surprised when they find out we actually believe in natural selection. Oh, that's why. You're doing the same thing that John and Jane do, where you say the mechanisms of evolution are real and the observable patterns of evolution are real, but that doesn't mean that evolution is real. That's because many people think natural selection is basically equivalent to molecules to man evolution. And this is likely due to the fact that natural selection can be scientifically demonstrated, leading many to believe evolution itself has been confirmed and therefore repeatedly fully validated scientifically. We don't believe that evolution has been fully validated scientifically because we're just confusing the words natural selection and evolution we know that evolution has been fully validated scientifically. Notice this is something that debate bros do, as lo do a lot as well. This whole dick writing a dictionary bullshit, where they try and use um, they try and use their rudimentary understanding of linguistics to try and trap you in a rhetorical trap, rather than to actually um, understand the nuance behind what someone's actually saying and ask questions to find out before making assumptions. They make the assumption and they try and trap you in that. Um, it, it's, it's frustrating because like you, you might say something benign um, and uh, have these people say, ah, but you said something different earlier. And, to, and you're like, and, and your response would be, yeah, I, I said that earlier. That was, that is either you either misunderstood me or I didn't mean that or I've changed my mind but this is what I'm saying now nope nope don't expect to walk away from anything you've ever said you said the T is a you will canal me oh cancel yeah because of all of the ways that it's been fully validated scientifically all jokes aside, it never fails to amaze me how organizations like Answers in Genesis can stare down the barrel of the mountains of evidence supporting evolution, <clears throat> admit that the mechanisms by which evolution functions are obviously verifiably true. Live They're missing the forest valkai from the trees, perhaps? <laughs> in a world where they benefit from medicine and agriculture and the whole field of biology, all of which hinges on our understanding of evolution and still maintain uh, that all that's it. of these scientists for hundreds of years were all wrong because they were just confused about the definitions of a couple of words. That is a level of misplaced confidence that I hope I never understand. Now the namesake of the most popular <laughs> version of evolution today, Charles Darwin, you can understand that stuff. observable evidence of evolution in the form of natural selection because of the variation he saw within certain kinds of animals. He saw many differences, such as the variation in beak size. Today, the ability for these small observable variations to occur in real time within a species is now often called microevolution by many. No, it's not. Variation occurring within a population is just called variation. Microevolution refers to small changes within the range of that variation. 
It's changes in the allele frequencies across multiple generations due to gene flow, genetic drift, and get this, Allele frequencies being basically what you were learnt in high school uh, biology um, around different genes and the way that the hereditary genes um, fit within character to characteristics. So, like you know, you got you've got yeah, allele frequencies is the encompassing term for all of the those things. Answers in Genesis is a creationist group um they're the group that uh that i personally have uh very personal beef with because they provide um they provide um per school curriculum for um so, uh, some of the schools in australia uh including the one that one of the ones that uh, my uh nephews goes to so yeah, um, I hate them. I think that they are her a heretical cult, and uh, they should be, uh, you know, uh, removed. Like the 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 organization should not be allowed to exist. Could have been. It does sound like that. Natural selection. And this is where it starts to get a little tricky for the average person who often hears and understands conceptually that the generic meaning of evolution is change in living things over time. That is an incorrect definition of evolution, and that has caused a lot of confusion. You're right. The actual definition of evolution is any change in the heritable characteristics of a population across multiple generations. It's the generations part that's important, because evolution necessarily takes more than one lifetime. So when people don't understand that, they think that if they'll just keep watering their tomato plants, eventually hey, they'll evolve to produce watermelons. But this is a very First time chat. Fix. Welcome. It's something that I've addressed countless times, both in this series and out in the real world. But that doesn't sound like what you're trying to say here. What it sounds like you're trying to say here is if you misunderstand it evolution, goes fairly well. then evolution makes no sense. And therefore, evolution makes no sense. And I'm waiting for you to say something different because that is the feel that I'm getting from this video thus far. You see, every biologist... Sorry. Every time I load a new area in Elder Scrolls Online, it like destroys this. Over time. Also, I so need to change my uh, description. Has changed can't mean um, some kind of fish to philosopher definition of evolution if both camps, almost diametrically opposed in their beliefs, affirm creatures can change. You keep saying that living things can change, but you've yet to clarify how they change, or how much they can change, or how long it takes them to change, or whether one generation or multiple generations change, or whether individuals or populations change, and these are all things that you need to be very, very, very clear about when talking about evolution, but especially when teaching about evolution. We're over a quarter of the way into the video, and if I were to stop it right now, I wouldn't know if he was talking about acclimatization, adaptation, or evolution. This dude has yet to successfully define the thing that he's trying to debunk. It's actually the type of change that both groups disagree on, and there which kind observational science supports. Um, it, it, they want some form. They want some form of um power over over people. Power or money is usually what it is. They want to have some form of control over the narrative. Um, yeah, that it's always some, they, they, they want something material. It's just about finding out what that material thing is that they want. Because obviously they're not building treasures in heaven if they, uh, care about, um, uh, speaking out against the creation that God gifted them with, you know? Oh my glob, did he actually just say observational science? For context here, this is one of the biggest hairs that Answers in Genesis famously tries to split in order to try to muddy the world. Yeah, it seems like a very American thing that has spread to the rest of the world. Thanks for that. ...of scientific knowledge enough to make themselves seem credible. They try to split science into two unequal camps, one of which being observational science, which deals with things that you can observe from start to finish, like the life cycle of a fly, and the other being historical science, which deals with things that you science can't observe bitches. from start to finish, Stupid like science the bitches. formation of a galaxy. Yeah, you've done that one and their before. argument is that because you can't observe the entire event in historical science, that means that your interpretation of the data is entirely based on your religious beliefs. And yes, of course, that yeah, could yeah, be like evolution. 
Yeah, but yeah, but like if you if you if you're in a plane and look out the window, you can't see the curvature of the ve- of the Earth. Um, like, well, explain that, uh, evolutionist, e- evolutionoid. Evolutionism. So, for example, by their logic, if a creationist astronomer were to see a comet, they would automatically know that the comet must be less than 10,000 years old because the whole universe is less than 10,000 years old. Whereas if an evolutionist astronomer... What's it with... What what is it with people, um, with with chuds creating, like, anime avatars who are supposed... who, like, have helmets and shit that, like... What's the other one, um... Like, I am a Gundam or something like that? Like, what is this? What is this? They're all like... Oh my gosh, this is 81 subscribers! Oh, he's tiny! Yeah, but does this guy have... Does this, Was this guy commented... Have a video that was commented on by Bad Empanada? I don't think so. ...astronomer were to see a comet. We must just assume that there's some endless supply of comets out there because the universe is billions of years old according to our religious beliefs. But of course, since this is all historical science, Mega Man one of these McGrain. competing theories because is either Oh, testable. literally because of uh, the some conservative women fought against the US government on an abolition one at a time, it showed evangelicals that could spread their influence. Told you! I mean, like, it's always for something material. It's never, it's never for the religion itself. This is why, like... Don't, don't fall into the trap, the, the big-brained atheist trap of thinking that people just believe in things because they believe in things. Um, because that doesn't matter at the end of the day. What matters is how institutions use religion in order to gain material, uh, wealth, I guess. Mega Man. Repeatable. And therefore, any attempts to understand the origins of this comet is an entirely faith-based endeavor. And no, none of that is a straw man or a hyperbole. That's all from their freaking website. So whenever this dude or anybody yeah, but in their website is talks fucking about observation insane. science, just remember that what they're actually saying is science that they can't BS their way out of, as opposed to the science that they try to drag down to their level to avoid having a serious conversation about. In other words, it's a thought-terminating cliche. Seriously, watch the, read the book Cultish. You see, as Darwin observed the variations in various kinds of animals, he then extrapolated the observable variation he saw by claiming that perhaps given enough time, they could eventually become fundamentally new kinds of animals. But in order for that to have happened, one kind of creature, let's say a lizard-like animal, would have somehow needed to acquire brand new, never before existing genetic information for different forms, functions, and features like feathers, wings, or a different type of lung system, for instance, to turn it into a different kind, like a... It, 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 that sounds complicated. I, want, I wonder if there's a word that we use to describe that process, you know? Like, it seems like we would have to study this or something, I think. Bird, for example. No idea what I it would like be. I feel like now is as good a time as any to remind everybody that kind is not a biological term. In biology, we group organisms based on their phylogenetics, or their evolutionary relationships to each other. And there are three main ways to do that, based on how we're doing the grouping and who we're including. First, there's a monophyletic group, which refers to a group of organisms and their common ancestor. So one whole branch on the tree of life. So birds, for example, are a monophyletic group. Then there's a paraphyletic group, which refers to a group of organisms and their common ancestor, but not all of the descendants of that ancestor. So for example, reptiles are a paraphyletic group, because birds evolve from reptiles. So when we talk about reptiles as distinct from birds, we're talking about this group and their ancestor, but not all of the possible offspring. We're separating the two and talking about one whole branch of the family tree, minus this chunk. And then there's a polyphyletic group, which refers to a group of organisms that share a common characteristic, but not a common ancestor that also has that characteristic. So, for example, flying animals would be a polyphyletic group. It would refer to most birds, lots of insects, and a few mammals as well. But birds, insects, and mammals don't share a common ancestor that was able to fly. They each develop flight independently of one another. And so if we were to group them together into a polyphyletic group, it would be representing three distinctly different chunks of the tree of life. All of this jargon and the little differences can sometimes get a little bit confusing for some people, so if you want to simplify things, you could also use the word clade, which is synonymous with monophyletic group. There's the human clade, and the turtle clade, and the canine clade. Or, you could use the word taxon. A taxon is pretty much any grouping on any part of the taxonomic hierarchy. So the way that we categorize life is domain, kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, species. Dangerous kangaroos punching children on family game shows.
And the word taxon could refer to any one of those levels of organizations. I could even say that such and such is true across multiple taxa. And that could be a characteristic that stretches across several species, or several orders, or even several phyla. Admittedly, I'm mainly saying all of this because I realized immediately after I released it that I should have put all of these details in the Light of Evolution episode 4, where I covered how to read an evolutionary tree, and I've been mad at myself about it ever since. But suffice oh, I need to, to watch that one for this video, there are lots of ways that biologists group and classify life. Kind is not one of them. But the problem was that Darwin knew almost nothing of what we now know regarding modern genetics, and simply assumed that there was virtually no limit to the potential variation among the individuals of a species. Though truthfully, any animal breeder of his day could have told him otherwise, because people have been performing experimental breeding for thousands of years now. That selective breeding to bring about desired traits that you're talking about there? That's called artificial selection. And not only did Darwin know about artificial selection, he literally coined the term artificial selection. Also, fun fact, Woo! artificial Tanky. selection is one of the most common ways to prove evolution by manipulating the allele frequency of a population through selective breeding. Also, I made empanadas last night for dinner. <laughs> in order to produce a variety of animals, <laughs> like how we manipulated the wild mustard plant to produce broccoli and cauliflower and kale and kohlrabi and Brussels sprouts. All of those very different phenotypes came about through simple mutation and human applied selection pressure. And so the general idea is if humans can produce that that, that, I mean, even bad empanadas are good. That much variation in such a short amount of time, imagine what can happen out in nature, where there's the whole world full of different ecosystems to choose from, and the vast expanses of Earth's history to work with. Which is exactly what Darwin wrote in On the Origin of Species. What are you talking about? Darwin's far-fetched beliefs in strange ideas like the possibility of a... Also, also, they always bring up Darwin because they, for the same reason that, I guess, people bring up Marx, um, conservatives talk about Marx and then ignore everything that's been, um, you know, talked about within, in Marxism since Marx was alive, you know what I mean? It, they can't engage with anything current. They have to go back in time until they find someone who had, you know, Darwin had issues, like, like, there are things, we've moved past Darwin, we've moved past Darwin, we've learnt from his discoveries, and, like, a, a lot of what we know evolutionary has been, Darwin never worked on. Like, he may have came up with certain concepts that we use to create the theory of evolution, but he isn't, like, he isn't Moses, he didn't write a book in the science bible to worship he, he he was someone that we built upon the writings on to create something new race of bears fishing in the water perhaps slowly developing shorter legs longer tails then wider mouths until they eventually evolved into whales is the concept often called macroevolution today yeah big surprise Aww. that's not what darwin said he was I I I made I made my empanadas from scratch. I don't know if it's authentic or not, um, because I don't actually follow. I haven't followed a recipe for any of my Mexican food for like a long time now. So I don't know if it's how similar it is to normal Mexican food. But all I know is I like the taste of it, and that's how I make it. <laughs> Was talking about another scientist's observation of North American black bears swimming in the water. With but apparently, um, Masa Harina and Masa Lista are good um, uh, corn meal uh, or corn flours to use for making tortillas, empanada, all of that sort of stuff. With their mouths yeah. open, catching insects on the surface of the water and eating them. And he said that maybe if there were enough insects there, that the bears could get all of the nutrients that they needed from just eating those insects, that perhaps someday they could evolve to be more and more aquatic in their structure and habits until they were, quote, as monstrous as whales. So he wasn't saying that bears could literally evolve into whales, he was talking about convergent evolution. And he was kind of right, because while insect-eating bears didn't turn into whales, fish-eating artiodactyls did. And it makes for a good story. <laughs> but like all fiction, it's completely unobservable outside of man-made depictions in textbooks and videos that are used to convince people of something no one has ever seen. Normally at this time, I would ask when this person... It just seems so weird to me that um, some people like Answers and Genesis can unironically talk about um, the way science works in the way that, pe that they themselves talk about how uh, Christianity works, like for, as a faith-based um, exercise. Science is not faith-based, it is, it is, um, you know, a battlefield of ideas, 
in a sense, a marketplace of ideas, one might say. But, like, the highest prestige you can have as a scientist is disproving something that someone, uh, that, that we've thought as um, established. Um, it's antithetical to the idea of religion. Science is nothing like religion observed the biblical creation that he believes in but remember answers in genesis are we have seen it like we we have literally like gosh um all right we like literally this one came out what no one has ever seen uh oh uh the skulls of snakes can evolve within a few generations to adjust to new diets so an evolution is a change in the allele frequency structure which is what we have observed so we have literally ob observed that the bones in the jaws of tiger snakes grow when they are fed larger prey uh, researchers examined two populations of large tiger snakes, one on the mainland and one on the Karnak Island, because of an absence of smaller prey such as frogs on the Karnak Island. The snakes have relied on fe feeding on large chicks of seabirds to survive, which are up to three times larger than their usual prey. However, while evolution can sometimes take millions of years, the University of Adelaide team found that intense natural selection pressure has caused the snake's skull shape to change since they were introduced to the island, yes, less than a hundred years ago, allowing them to swallow the chick's hull. Uh, much like the athlete's body changes shape with intense training, an island tiger snake skull adapts to the food it needs to survive. Now, like, we need to understand that we're not talking about the snake itself being the athlete's body. The athlete's body in this you know, circumstance is the entire island. So, that's... First thing that 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 answers in genesis would uh, have a problem with there um but yeah so skulls of island tiger snakes are better able to change their growth when trained on different foods the ability to change head shape during a lifetime as a result of diet increases these tiger snakes ability to survive in environments such as islands where there there is unusually large prey we we literally have seen exactly what this person is trying to say we haven't seen. Their position is entirely faith-based. They just want to convince you that so-called historical science is as well. So this person's argument isn't, I'm right and science is wrong. His argument is, I know I'm full of crap, but science is too. And for some reason, I find that even more obnoxious. Ironically, Darwin often used variation in kinds brought about by animal breeding as analogous to what natural selection might accomplish. Not yes. even a minute ago, this guy said that Darwin didn't know anything about that. Just throwing that out there. However, while breeders use intelligence to select for desired traits such as size, strength, or physical appearance. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, like, if you read Genesis, Genesis is full of those things. Like, you know, the, the order of creation is uh, jumbled up so, ma so much in Genesis, it's actually quite funny. Like, that, we need to understand that Genesis as a, like, a as a book in the Bible is a collection of what is essentially Aesop's fables. It, it is creation myth. It's the kind of things that all societies had. Just stories to explain things and explain, like, you know, like the, the, the lion and the mouse taking the... It, it, it's as if someone took, the, took uh, Aesop's fables and took them literally, as if, like, uh, animals could literally talk to each other. And that's how, you know, life worked. And trying to create a literal religion out of that. Genesis is just a collection of myths and fables to explain the creation of the earth like they're not they've, they've never meant to be taken absolutely literally if you do that then you are acting on the assumption on in the incorrect assumption that the books in the bible were, were written to be taken literally um even even um uh moses even moses as a human as a person may not have even existed so we're looking at a good portion of the Old Testament, which was written as fables and myths, like a creation story in order to pass on knowledge from generation to generation, like it, a, philo a philosophy textbook, a collection of stories. The limits of what can be selected for are determined by the genetic variability already in existence within the creature, contrary to what Darwin imagined. Selection is a process dependent on what is available. No. 
uh, again, like, why do they always have to... Br they always have to attack Darwin because they can't attack anything new. They have to go back to the person who thought of a lot of these things that have um, ended up in the theory of evolution in order to try and debunk the entire thing. Because, of course, if Darwin was wrong about one thing, then all of evolution must be wrong. Well, no, that's not how science works, dude. Like, science literally works from disproving theories and creating new ones from those disproven theories. We're like, okay, that the, Darwin was wrong about this. What can? Why was Darwin wrong about this? And can I disprove this new theory that I've come up with? Like, that's how science works. You fucking imbecile. To be selected from, which is not limitless. The bottom line is, you can't select what's not there. So now here's the million-dollar question: Where did the variation we see today come from? We agree that dogs have been selectively bred to bring about different traits. But when was the last time that you observed a wolf giving birth to a chihuahua? When was the magic cloud man? The last time that you observed the variation that we see in dogs occurring naturally? Yes. You have. Yeah, like and understand and understanding that the word fact is a colloquialism and not a scientific term. Understand that now, that the word fact is a colloquialism to describe the way things are as we see them. Facts are not objective. There is nothing objective. If there was, then communication would be instant and we wouldn't ha need language. We wouldn't have different language. Like, there's, there, there is literally a story in the Bible talking about, um, talking about uh, the way this works. Like, the Tower of Babel, like, and how language creates a disjunction of understanding between people like again yeah gravity is is a theory that doesn't mean you can just fly it's just our best explanation for what we see as gravity yeah everything a theory is the scientific term that people try and use fact for but theory is the closest we can come to objective reality through our observation of, um, through our, through, through the tools that we've been given, basically, to understand our reality. Like, everything that we use to understand reality and to convey it to each other is subjective. Yeah. Everything we use, every form of communication we have, person to person, is subjective. Therefore, there is no possibility for objective truth to be conveyed from one person to another. It is literally impossible. And if you disagree with me, um, then show me your objective truth. Convey it to me perfectly so that I will understand immediately your objective truth as you understand it. Do it. Immediately. If you can't do that, if you have to teach me how to understand your objectivity, if you need to convey it through language, through English, through, um, through you know, Spanish, through whatever language that you use, if it's objective, it should just be self-evident, and it do shouldn't need to be communicated. Yet, we exist as beings that learn and grow through communication. Because it doesn't happen. What did happen was that over a very long period of time, we looked at the natural variation of the dog population and we bred the smallest ones. And then we took the natural variation of that population and bred the smallest ones. And then we took the natural variation of that population and bred the smallest ones until eventually we got down to a chihuahua. That level of variation didn't exist in the original population. So how do you suppose that happened? How do you suppose new alleles that we don't see in nature came into existence just through selective breeding? How does that possibly make sense without mutation? Creating new alleles, new versions of the genes to produce new variation that we didn't see originally. That is how evolution works. Mutation creates variation. Natural selection acts on the variation. Mutation created variation in dogs. Artificial selection acted on that variation and produced phenotypes that were impossible in the original population. 
Detailed genetic analysis and knowledge of how DNA functions became a study many years after Darwin and revealed that all of the genes from a species compose a gene pool from which selection can occur in populations. The key to remember is that selection is limited to the genes in the gene pool of that particular kind. Genes that aren't in the gene pool of a kind can't be selected for. Again, mutation creates variation which is then acted upon by natural selection. This video is admitting that two out of those three things is real and desperately trying to ignore the third thing and just hoping that you don't notice. Ten bucks says they don't bring up mutation until the very end of the video and then they just quickly dismiss it as something that causes genetic disorders. Oh yeah, that, that's what they'll always do. So I understand as well, like, this is an important thing to understand about um, the way fascists use science as well. Um, when we're talking about mutations, when we're talking about variations, um, people, fa people, fascists that use science to push, um, you know, bigoted views against people will look at mutations and variations as inherently uh, morally wrong. They will look at, they will use evolutionary, evolutionary science to, um, or the theory of evolution to claim that differences between um, uh, ethnic groups are natural and that we need to adhere to natural selection in order to have a cohesive society. But the problem with that is you're making a lot of uh, moral assumptions based on scientific views and you're not doing any materialistic analysis to prove whether your opinions are correct. And that's what we use sociology, critical theory, etc, etc for. Um, when it comes down to it, one of the beautiful things that we have discovered through our journey uh, through the evolution, uh, through evolutionary theory, uh, coming to where we are today, is this the fact? The talking about like dog evolution, right, and and um, artificial selection pressure that we have given to dogs. The key information, the secondary key piece of information there, which isn't been talking about in this talked about in this video, but it is relevant to real life, is that. We, as human beings, were able to apply that selection pressure in order to solve a problem. We have the power to change evolution and shape society in better ways than it would have naturally. And we can come to those conclusions of what is better through material analysis and dialectics. It's important to not use the theory of evolution and science to try and uh, purport eugenics and uh, other things which have been, you, you know, evolutionary biology has been used time and time again to claim that there are is a natural state of human beings which just is not the case when you actually look at the information the fact is that we have actually applied unnatural selection pressure to ourselves um to our society which has worked out better in a lot of cases than it would have naturally a lot of pe less people dying um, that sort of thing, you know, vaccines, all of the uh, vaccines, um, the, the, the entire fucking medical system, like, all of our science, like, heart transplants, all of these things have changed the way that nature operates. We are both a part of nature and have the power to control nature. We are in a dialectical relationship with evolution. Evolution isn't something that just happens. We have agency over this shit. And we do not have to accept what fascists claim about race. Sometimes when I'm trying to communicate the big picture as to why natural selection isn't evolution, I like to use a simple explanation using a few decks of cards to illustrate. And although, like all analogies, it isn't completely accurate in every detail, it can still be effective in demonstrating some basic concepts. If we start with two decks, shuffling each and dealing half of the cards from one deck and half from the other deck into a new deck, we would see the new deck we created would be different from what the first ones were originally. But because there's a limited amount of cards to start with, they can only vary so much. And the big takeaway is this. 
No matter how long you deal these cards, shuffling and dealing cards won't create new cards with brand new symbols that never existed before. And this is- Did you know that uh, whales have legs? The erotic, erotic endurance of whale hips. Uh, buried deep within the body of a whale underneath the heaps of muscles and tendons lie some little lonely bones. They are whale hips and they are one of the stranger examples of evolution's transforming power. So, like, Forrest goes into this in another video uh, in a lot more depth, but in a, if I can try and put it in a nutshell, which I'm terrible at doing, I'm sorry, um... There are many different reasons why we know evolution to be a established theory, why it works, why we can basically, why we can calculate the future with the past, basically, when it comes to evolution theory. Um, one of them is looking at vestigial um, structures. Um, in a sense, this guy is right. If we're ignoring um, mutations, like, yeah, like when you co combine these things and reorganize them, yeah, like it does look different. In the case of evolution, evolution loves to... Um, evolution, yeah, the forest, forest Valkai has said this. Evolution is a tinkerer, not a creator. Um, evolution uses what we have more than it uses mutations. So, like, mutations are a change in allele, in, in, um, allele structure, I think? This is moving further away th from what I was trying to say. <laughs> Basically, whales have legs, and that's how we know that evolution works. Uh, can you, like, fuck off? Continue, go away. Ah, lame. But yeah, whales have hips. But because we know that uh, whales have whales have vestigial legs, like tucked inside their bodies, like we that's how we know that whales evoluted evolu uh, evolved from land dwelling mammals. That's the beautiful thing. Like that's that's how we know, and we can actually even look at those legs and the bone structure and tell which mammals that they most likely uh, evolved from based on certain things, um, uh, certain certain uh, trends in the fossil records going back through generations. It's really really interesting and really fun to look and learn about. Snakes used to have wings, yeah, but like. Oh, you want to sneak in a Pokemon card into those decks? Well, I mean, that's mutation. Mutation is like the change, a change in information within um, the genetic structure. Um, and that could be added information. It could be removed information. But what he's doing here with a pack of cards is he's trying to remove the possibility for talking about mutations. That's what natural selection does. It simply selects from what's already available. It doesn't add new... Yes, new like, uh, this is one of my favourite things, like, to talk about, and, and it really um, pisses off a lot of people, is when I say that gravity gravity isn't uh, objective. Like, gravity is one of the most important things that we, like, one of the best ways to describe um, the lack of ob objectivity in the in the universe. We can't observe directly gravity with our eyes or any of our senses. It's not... Like, it's not even as objective as, you know, the, the, the nose in front of my face. We can only experience gravity through the way it interacts with things that we observe. And, and that's one of the beautiful things about science, is that we know things through experimentation and through disproving theories and creating new ones. Foreseen cards, so to speak. Mm. Of course it doesn't. That's what mutation is for. 
I've used the exact same playing cards analogy when talking about natural selection myself, but the big, oh, yeah. obvious, glaring hole in that analogy that you glossed over by just saying that, obviously the analogy can't cover everything, is that DNA has to be replicated before it's passed on. If you had to recreate that entire deck of cards every single time you wanted to deal it out, you would probably accidentally make one that was a little bit of a different shape, or maybe like a seven of jacks, or something that said two of hearts on the top and actually had three of clubs in the middle. And when you dealt those out, it would then fundamentally change the way that the game is played. Nobody's just scooping up everybody's genes and throwing them out to their kids, dude. Like, we're 10 minutes That's into the video, cool. and this dude's whole thesis thus far has been two things that aren't the and yeah, like some of the ways we learn, we, we, we figure out which ways, w w where things evolve from are, are amazing to me. Like the, to, to the, the way that, you know, different bones form, like, so, so some animals might have arms that look very similar, but like they, they have a different structure in the hands. So, uh, so like we, we, we have to go back in the fossil record far enough to find the branching part um where hands uh either the branching part where hands like um ev evolved differently um in order to have the same structure that humans have whereas like uh, it has a different structure in another animal um or hands could have evolved completely separately um and that's why they're different like that, that it's 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 so cool and so interesting same thing aren't the same thing and, and like it it, it it shits me that like there's Christ there, there's people who use christianity in order to try and make the world a boring place and, and that's why i call it heresy because god in my opinion god created something amazing and something that we can study and look at and they're just interested all they want to do is um fucking destroy everything that uh, god put god a, a, if a god exists he gifted us with you know that's just sad and fuck those people and if you ignore a major part of evolution then evolution doesn't work like i agree but it's still dumb as professor walter veith former holder of the chair of zoology at the university of western cape said when discussing natural selection the very name selection implies that you're choosing between two or more variants Natural selection never increases the Dick number of the dictionary it time. Them. So, how does a mechanism what? that makes less and no, less doesn't. end up making more and more? Yeah, so obviously... Well, I mean, obviously, yeah, yeah that's a... Uh, uh, yeah. Rather than continuing to dig into that, I want to draw your attention to something else. Dr. Veith is a PhD zoologist. He is also a creationist who abandoned science after being convinced that all the prophecies in the Bible were coming true. He is now a Seventh-day Adventist who left his job in academia after trying to teach creationism to his university students. And now he says that the belief in evolution is one of the root causes of racism. Now that all probably <laughs> sounds fine for answers in Genesis, and you can see why they would quote him here. But Dr. Veith is not just a creationist zoologist. He is also a notorious conspiracy theorist who has given countless talks all over the world about his insane beliefs, many of which are freely available on YouTube, the rest of which he sells on his website. For example, Dr. Veith believes that the food that we choose to eat is the main cause of disease. He says that caffeine oh, I hate is a these people. nerve toxin that causes all sorts of horrible deformities, and that giving sports drinks to children causes uncontrollable aggression. He also says that the Freemason secret- I mean, like, to be fair? People who say things like that does result in uncontrollable aggression, just just from me personally. Secretly control all the governments of the world, that the Pope is the Antichrist, that Saddam Hussein died of cancer in 1999, and the man that we hung in 2006 was just one of his many body doubles, that Islam was created by the Roman Catholic Why? Church in order to stamp out the last remnants of true Christianity. Oh... Oh, there's no okay. Like there's, you know, there's an act. There's actually groups of people who think that uh, Christianity was created by Jewish people by to in order to destroy Rome. Do you do you, do you, do you know that 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 that's an actual belief people have? I, I have I have come across these people. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Uh I mean, based. I mean, like, stamping out Roman Christianity? Based? Based Islam, I guess? <laughs> that men's domination over women is the natural order- Oh, by the way. You know the NIV Bible, right? The- I can't remember what it's called. The New International Version. Um...
Do you know who owns uh, the copyright for the NIV Bible? Zondervan is an international Christian media and publishing co company located in Grands Rapids. Uh, so, uh, currently, Zondervan is owned by News Corp. <sighs> so the Bible is literally owned by Rupert Murdoch. I'm just going to leave that one with you. ...of things ordained by God and that women in government is a sign of the apocalypse, <laughs> that the CIA is behind 9-11 and the Oklahoma City bombing, that climate change and the COVID vaccine are part of the Vatican's conspiracy to bring about the New World Order, and that the myth of the lost city of Atlantis... Hold on, I need to go back. In and there, is some, there is some amazing stuff. This just gets good. ...men's domination over women is the natural order of things ordained by God... Wait, so the guy who thinks that evolutionary biology, um, ev the theory of evolution, it was invented racism, which uh, there is a grain of truth to that. In what I just said earlier, fascists like to use the theory of ev evolution to justify eugenics, um, but that doesn't mean that it invented racism. Racism was invented by the Catholic Church or the Church of England or like basically who uh, and basically uh, whoever was trying to um kill black people and take their land at the time um that that's where racism came from uh okay yeah capitalist big big bible damn we should have bought ownership of the bible i feel like that's easy money i'm just like how can you own the fucking bible holy fuck i just I, it, like the bible is literally owned by a fucking demon holy shit holy shit yeah, Spain invented whiteness, but it's all an excuse to exclude others and not feel bad killing them. Yeah. Yep. Yes. Yes. And and and, and that's not just that that's not just a what Dan randomly just said there. Uh Spain inventing whiteness. And like England did the same thing as well. Um that that is literally what they did. Like racism was created in law in order to colonize. Like you can go back and look at the change between using religion in order to colonize people to using race in order to colonize people, and then that was created. So it used to be more of a colloquialism, and then it was institutionalized by Spain and, or like steel, I can't remember, uh, Spain and um, England and the uh, larger colonial powers, France as well. Yes, that, that, that's why race, racism was created. But uh, I, what I was saying was, like, the guy who is aware of the negative aspects that um, the theory of evolution has been used for in the past then go on, goes on to say that um, the men dominating women is the natural order, like, doing literally the same thing that fascists do. It's and just... women in government is a sign of the apocalypse, that the CIA is behind 9-11 and the Oklahoma City bombing, that climate change and the COVID vaccine are part of the Vatican's conspiracy to bring about the New World Order, and that the myth of the lost city of Atlantis is evidence in and of itself of a hyper-advanced civilization that existed before the Flood and conducted experiments to blend human and animal DNA. And despite all of those very strong- Again, everything up to and including, like, the flood in the Bible ha w was was a collection of, like, Brothers Grimm fairy tales. Like, they-, they n Historically, they've never been taken literally until, like, Christians came along and started doing that. Stances, one question that he refuses to answer is whether the Earth is round or flat. He dodges that question every time. Oh, and by the way, he was also once investigated by the German government because he gave a lecture <clears> in <throat> Germany about how the Jesuits and the Freemasons conspired to create the state of Israel, during which he relativized the Holocaust and repeatedly quoted Benjamin Friedman, who is an outspoken Holocaust denier. I wonder if Anthony Jesuits to endorse Dr. Veith's intellectual prowess in regards to any of those other...
Yeah, the, the, this 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 group is uh, teaching. This this group is teaching teaching my nephews. Um, I I fucking hate this planet, and I and I want I want off. Ideas. After all, the quote that they use in their video is from 1999. That means he's been saying all of that other stuff for at least 22 years since he said that. And Answers in Genesis is a reputable organization, so it's not like they would just pick some random guy who happened to have a PhD and say something that they liked and put him on their massive platform without caring about the fact that he's freaking crazy. That would be grossly irresponsible. And believe me, there's a lot more to say about Walter Veith. Seriously, the deeper you Where's dig, the, it, the worse it gets. But I just want to point out Where's the pictures? Answers in Genesis, citing that Where, where are the pictures? What is this? Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. <clears throat> The greatest story ever told. Six translations. Search any word or phrase. Fully voiced WEB translation with Trivia. Version 1.1 is live on Steam now. More updates. January 2023. My gosh. Oh my gosh, it's the same, it's the same ad twice. Blah. But that's, it's literally just a book. It's just a book on Steam. It's just a book on Steam. Okay, how much is it? 21 bucks. W-E-B version. W-E-B Bible copyright holder. Da -da 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 WB This is an English of translation of Bible freely share translation work of American Standard Version blah 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 uh, copyright public domain copyright waived all right so we have a based bible but you still have to pay for it though you still have to pay for it for $21.50 this is a crazy addition to the god of war franchise i'm going to waltz into the vatican walk up to the pope and say i'm sorry but do you have all the achievements in the bible didn't think so sweetheart get the hell out of my chair Needs ray tracing. Any game that upsets Reddit is this a game for me. Okay, I mean, if it's Reddit, like any any like you go somewhere on Reddit, you're going to find someone upset. What are you talking about, my dude? Big fan of the series. Hype for the sequel. The reply. 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 Oh no! Wait. This is ah. Oh, damn it! I was gonna throw. But yeah, hope hype for the sequel. Um, wait, what's the, what's the Muslim Bible called again? I can't remember. What's the is Islamic Bible? Gonna update the Bible. It's gonna, oh my gosh, could you imagine? Like, they update the Bible and it becomes, um, the, the, uh, oh, the, the, the Quran. Fuck, I don't know why I remember that, but, like, it updates to the Quran. <laughs> this is, like, updates to the Quran. <laughs> Please, I I just want to I want to see Quran update when oh uh, man I need to open this up I need to open this up in uh, my Steam hold on oh uh. oh I need to buy it in order to actually comment on it <laughs> not gonna do that that dude as a scientific authority and an example of a critical thinker who broke free from the norm and discovered the truth is a monumental red flag. In the same way. It updates to the Mormon Bible. No, say it ain't so, please. No, Quran. Insha. <laughs> Mashallah. Mashallah, sister. Group of dogs, some with long, some with medium or short hair, migrated into an area that had a very cold climate, for example. <sighs> Obviously, the long-haired dogs would likely survive better as they would be able to keep warmer than their shorter- Why does it sound like- why does it sound like they're playing the house theme in the background? You know the- dun, 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 dun. You, you, you remember the one from there? The Bible. 
Oh my gosh. For hairy counterparts. I used to have an anime Bible. So, because this I do need- I, I wouldn't mind getting the, getting another copy of the Bible. It's been a while since I've actually had a full copy of it. I think it got lost in one of the many moves that I've had. That specific genetic combination, those dogs will reproduce- But I also need a Wicca Bible, whatever that one's called. ...advantageous in this game of life under this environmental rule set. But remember, if we changed the environment, i.e. the rules, and had dropped the original group of dogs into a very warm environment, the climate would have selected for the dogs with more of the short-haired gene combinations. So natural selection isn't a truly creative process. It only selects from what God made in the first place in each kind. And now we're right back to this. The major driver of evolution is true, but evolution somehow isn't true. And that might seem innocuous enough. I mean, that description of natural selection was just fine. But the problem comes when you buy into their rhetoric, and then you have to deal with the implications of their dogma. You see, as I've said countless times before, even if you could completely disprove evolution in its entirety, you still wouldn't be one step closer to proving creationism. Because disproving one idea isn't the same as proving another. So all you would be able to do at that point is say, I have no explanation for biodiversity, and then start putting in the hard work <clears> and <throat> gather evidence for creationism. But answers in Yeah, yeah, doesn't... yeah, 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 yeah. But if you if you if you if you if you defeat Darwin, the final boss boss of um evolutionoidism, then 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 evolution doesn't exist anymore and we can go back to believing in, in cloud cloud wizard. Bible Let's Play. Get that. They see creationism oh and evolution as two competing religions. That would so be the most boring thing ever. Isn't true. They're saying that creationism is true. And not only that, or would it? Know Maybe. Who, is. who knows? It's God. And not just any God, the God of the Bible. And not just any Bible, the version of the Bible that they're reading. And not just any reading of that version of the Bible, their interpretation of that version of the Bible. Out of all the possible creation myths, they have the correct understanding of the correct interpretation of the correct translation of the correct version of the correct one. And that allows them to disregard the scientific evidence that is true and understandable across time, space, culture, and language. And once you trap yourself in that kind of thinking, you're immediately forced to grapple with the fact that while yes the bible does mention creation it also mentions lots of other things like for example unicorns and now you need to find a way to make unicorns sound scientifically feasible by saying things like well rhinoceroses and narwhals exist so it's not really that crazy that there might be a one-horned horse as well and lots of other animals have gone extinct so just because we don't see any unicorns around today we shouldn't doubt their existence in the past while also saying of course that if you can't observe something directly then it's not observational science and we have no no way to validate that it's real. And also, if we haven't found enough transitional fossils, then there's no reason to believe those species existed and we should disregard half of biology. And because this god can just whip up new species out of nothing with all the genetic variation they could ever possibly need, that means that the diversity we see within human oh my populations gosh, 100%. today all could have been created in one single generation gosh. from one pair of middle brown people. And you can make a simple dihybrid cross like you learn how to do in freshman biology class to show that the 100,000 years of human diversification, which we have detailed genetic evidence for, all happened overnight. So while to the average viewer, this video might seem like a simple difference in vocabulary, and when you really look at the fine details, it's just not quite what you think. What they're actually doing here is baiting a massive trap to try to convince you to distort everything you know about biology and... Forrest Valkyrie is, is cancelled. He used the word trap. ...geology and physics and chemistry and astronomy, all to make room for this one single belief that they offer no evidence for besides, I read it in a book. Don't fall for it. To create truly new traits, mutations in the DNA would have had to propaganda. happen. Propaganda. It's propaganda. Create, add and integrate a huge amount of incredibly sophisticated information into the gene pool, something that's never been observed. And now, in the last stretch of the video, we're uh, finally talking yes, about Yes, it has. Life. And you'll notice that the wording here is very, very specific, so that it seems like a slam dunk for all the people who don't realize. Red hair is based on a mutation of a gene. Intersex people is based on a muta on several mutations of several genes. Like it is perfectly observable. What are you talking about? That we have observed mutations that add tremendous amounts of information to the gene pool of several populations. And also, it avoids all accountability, because no matter which mutation I point to, this guy just has to say, it's not sophisticated enough information, and it didn't create a new kind. And if I go through every single detail of punctuated equilibrium, and how adaptive radiation follows mass extinction, and how clearly rapid variation is dependent on the availability of niches, and how different selection pressures work, and how different patterns of selection work, all this guy has to do is say, you didn't observe that 
that from start to finish, therefore it's not observational science, it's just your religious beliefs. It's like when a child invents a new game on the playground and then constantly comes up with new rules that you didn't know about so that they can't lose. When you choose to start from the premise that one person's guess is just as valid as another person's evidence, you have sacrificed the ability to learn. Genetic mutation may sound creative when used in pop culture references where superheroes gain fantastic abilities. Load. So, like, this is this is like th their understanding of mutation is basically from pop culture, but that's not how mutation works. Mutation is just a change in in genetic, just a change in genetic material, and, and they're not mistakes. They are variations. Like th th this is what I mentioned earlier. They are applying a moral baggage to these concepts which have no morality inherent within them. A mutation is a mutation. It is not a deviation. It is not a degeneration. It is not a mistake. It is a mutation. It is a change in genes. It is a change in the genes. It is a change. That's all it means. Fuck. by various factors that occur when DNA produces copies of itself, <clears throat> far from producing useful and novel genetic information. Mutations are you fucking kidding me? Mutations are the cause of our fucking sight. Like, we... uh... they degrade the existing genetic code already in place. And no, while they you don't. Achieve different looks, such as normally red flowers being made pink, this is not actually the creation of a. That novel is not how mutation works in it at it's all. It's brought about by subtraction, not addition. No. First of all, saying that mutations degrade the genetic code is implying that DNA has some sort of perfect template state and that mutations are deviating away from that. That's not how that works. Second, mutations don't tend to break things. Again, this implies that mutations are generally harmful, which they're not. Most mutations are neutral, and out of the around 175 novel mutations per human generation, only about three of them on average are actually deleterious. Third, we do see beneficial mutations all the time, from bacteria that become resistant to antibiotics, to humans who produce lactase past the age of five so they can keep drinking milk for their whole lives. Wild almonds naturally produce a chemical called amygdalin, which breaks down into cyanide during digestion. Just a couple of handfuls is enough to kill somebody, but one single gene mutation made the domestic breed safe to eat, which is why they were one of the first domesticated trees. And what about the rock pocket mice that live across the American Southwest. This is a vast stretch of desert studded with patches of dark rock, and the mice that live in the dark rocky areas have each developed dark colorations to give them the camouflage they need to survive. And even though some of those patches are hundreds of miles apart, the mice have developed the same coloration through completely different mutations on completely different genes. That's mutation producing new phenotypes that are acted on by natural selection to change the composition of the population to something that wasn't present in the original variation. Literally the exact thing that this video says could never happen, happening over and over and over again in several different ways that we can easily verify through genetic testing. And fourth, we do see mutations that create new phenotypic characteristics rather than just tinkering on what was already there all the time. From bacteria that evolved to eat human-made products like plastic and nylon, to Lenski's long-term evolution experiment showing new genetic variation and new metabolic functions evolving, to the evolution of single-celled organisms into multi-celled organisms, which is something that has been directly observed from start to finish in laboratory settings multiple times. All this dude has accomplished for the past 13 and a half minutes is conceding just a little bit of ground to science and then trying to plant the exact same flag of creationism in a new spot. It's the same tired, worn out, boring arguments that have been given again and again and again and again for decades and they are debunked the exact same way every single time. And just to prove that point, here's an article called New Proteins Without God's Help, in which a biologist tears apart almost these exact same arguments that mutation can't create new things like a protein back in 1985. It is genuinely embarrassing that Answers in Genesis is still releasing videos about this as if it's some hot take. So when evolutionists invoke mutations as a key evolutionary mechanism, it's like saying that scrambling the information in a computer program could perhaps result in better software being written by random processes. Anyone who thinks that random changes to computer code can't make better software has never talked to an actual programmer. 
in my video about the argument from complexity, where I talked in great detail about how comparing DNA to a computer code is a really misleading and problematic thing for creationists to do. My comment section was full of people who are software engineers or computer programmers telling me about how complex code gets written by accident all the time. Like seriously, everybody that I've talked to with even a little bit of coding experience has told me stories about how they oops their way to success. I do not know why creationists are still using this talking point. So again, this is just boring, lazy thinking. Yeah, almost as if like if you if 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 there's a random change in um, computer code and it uh, and it has some sort of beneficial uh, selection pressure to it, i.e., a technician can make use of it and it works for the uh, for for the tool that it uh, was uh, meant for, or for some other purpose, that it's going to be included within that um, complex code. It, it's almost as if like. Computer coding was is, is the the worst kind of analogy that you can make. Like if you could scramble computer code until you found something useful, and it had selection pressure, the analogy completely falls apart in their hands. It's like the old saying about how a tornado going through a junkyard can't build an airplane. It's just bringing up something completely ridiculous and so unrelated that we all just kind of forget what we're actually talking about. But in yeah, yeah, you say that, that people say that that a um, tornado can't uh, create an airplane. Yet there are people who literally think there's aliens on Mars because of like natural um, geological structures on the planet face. So. Again, <laughs> bad analogy for a creationist to use. Reality, corruption of DNA coding is a recipe for chaos. And the worse the corruption, the greater Not the problem. CHAOS! This is why we see... Oh, holy shit! He, he does kind of look like, um... What's his face? Jordan Peterson, in a sense. He's got the same really bad fashion sense. So many serious diseases today as the direct result of genetic mutation. Ten bucks says they don't bring up mutation until the very end of the video, and then they just quickly dismiss it as something that... Um, every every disease, every single disease or virus is the product of uh, mutation. So so the fuck what? It causes genetic disorders. Because when you ignore all the things that prove you wrong, it's just so easy to be right. Evolutionists like to refer to the sort of variation we see among individual kinds of animals as microevolution, implying that this is somehow related to the chance formation of fundamentally new animals by the supposedly existing but never observed process known as macroevolution. However, there is no demonstrable experiment relating so-called microevolution and macroevolution, which makes these terms highly misleading. There is no demonstrable experiment relating you to your parents. Sure, we might see some physical or maybe even genetic similarities, but no one has actually observed them having sex and producing a child with your exact DNA. So for all we know, it never happened. In fact, there's no reason to believe it. Sorry, but as somebody who only believes observational science, I can only assume that you just erupted from the back of another human like the mighty Suriname Toad. Wiggly and horrifying. Seriously though, <laughs> can you imagine if you use the exact same line of thinking that this oh, guy is right now on anything else? Like what if you were asked to judge a murder trial and you had the suspect's fingerprints on the murder weapon and you had footprints in the snow leading up to the house and you had a handwritten motive and you had an eyewitness who heard the guy say, I will now go kill this man. And you had a photograph of him going into the victim's house just before the time of death and coming out of the victim's house just after the time of death and you said, it depends. Was it a white police officer committing the com committing the crime? You know what? I never actually saw him murder the guy. So as far as I'm concerned, this whole thing's just a matter of faith. I can't tell. I think we should wait until the body cam footage is released um, and uh, maybe like push that back a few years before talking about this. Test or repeat the murder, and therefore, I can't prove anything about the murder. And because I personally believe that he's innocent, I can look at the evidence through my own personal lens and decide that it's all fake. The only difference between any two organisms, no matter what taxa, is their DNA. If I change the DNA, I change the organism. The only difference between microevolution and macroevolution is the amount of that change being made. It's the same change, just either a little bit of it or a lot of it. If I show you that I am able to walk five feet and then you later find that I have moved a mile, you don't have to wonder if I was propelled by magic. You can just assume that I did the five feet thing a whole bunch. Like this video is seriously 16 and a half minutes of this guy trying to convince everybody that two plus two equals four, but there's no reason to believe that two plus two plus two plus two plus two equals 10. Be honest, 
Has anyone ever seen something even close to what would be properly termed evolution in this world? Listen carefully Yes. Now, because I'm not messing with you. Yes. The Bible, on the other hand, makes perfect sense of what we observe in nature. And the donkey said to Balaam, What have I done to you to make you beat me these three times? And Balaam said to the donkey, You have made a fool of me. If I had a sword in my hand, I would kill you right now. And the donkey said to Balaam, Am I not your donkey, which you have ridden all these years? Am I in the habit of doing this to you? No, said Balaam. Yeah, no, that seems legit. And in case you're wondering, here's a snippet from the kids section of AnswersInGenesis.org where they assure children that yes, that donkey really did talk. One thing that I'm probably going to cut out of this video because it's pretty long and redundant is that they keep referring back to the fairy tale, The Emperor's New Clothes. In fact, there's a significant portion at the very beginning dedicated to retelling the story. And the general ideas that they're trying to convey with that are things like self-deception and fear of public scrutiny, with the argument being that the people who believe in evolution, just like the Emperor, are too afraid of looking stupid to realize that they're actually acting stupidly. The obvious issue being that science is based in skepticism, not dogma. The whole purpose of science is to try to prove yourself wrong and only move forward with an idea so long as you can't do that. That's why we say you never accept a hypothesis, you fail to reject a hypothesis. So for them to try to draw this connection between a tale about self-deception and the most well-established theory in all of biology really speaks to their misunderstanding about how science works more than anything else. Like they might as well have just said, it's still just a theory. And honestly, accusing a game theory. of deliberate self-deception and believing get ridiculous fucked. things because you don't want to look foolish and then looking very foolish in the process is such a hilariously ironic thing for an organization like Answers in Genesis to do. Like, that coming from them, of all people, is so good. They believe <sighs> in dragons and unicorns and zombies and giants and talking snakes and donkeys because the Bible says that you're a fool if you don't believe those things. And they're here comparing you to the emperor from the fairy tale because you believe in evolution <clears throat> based on the evidence for evolution. It just, it, it doesn't get any funnier than that. Like, I can't get past the fact that they could have picked anything. They could have picked anything else. They could have picked any other fairy tale. They could have picked any other hook. They could have picked any other gimmick in the whole world for this video. And that's the one that they went with. And I just, I don't think that it can get any better than that. Like, name a funnier thing that they could have done. You can't. It's not out there. It's never been observed, so it's not real. <laughs> Overall, I give this video a science teacher challenge level 2 out of 10. If you listen to what this guy said, it's very obvious that he didn't actually say anything. All Answers in Genesis has done here is create a new John and Jane video with half the presenters and twice the stock footage. Seriously, go back and watch the Reacteria episode where John and Jane try to debunk natural selection. It's almost the exact same arguments in the exact same order. Like, I'm pretty sure I know where this guy learned his stuff. And with that, I'm Forrest Valkai. Thank you so much for watching, liking, commenting, subscribing, and all the other stuff you do here on YouTube. Please exit through the gift shop on your way out, pick up one of these sweet t-shirts. Don't forget to go to blinkist.com slash Labs to start your seven-day free trial. Have an awesome rest of your day and never stop learning. Bye-bye. Amazing. But yeah, don't forget as well to support the original creator. Um, Forrest Valkai makes solid videos solid videos i'm gonna take a quick break um so don't go anywhere or do either way though i'll be right back after these short announcements hey. woohoo i'm back sorry that took so long i was cooking i was reheating my empanada Empanada. It is my empanada with homemade um, mango salsa. Salsa needs um, uh, flavors. I can't remember. It needs sour and sour and sweet for good salsa. So I used um, so it is. Don't fall off. Oh, you're gonna fall off, are you? There we go. So, curry, it's just coriander, fresh tomatoes, fresh um, capsicum, a red onion, um, and coriander. Or, uh, what do you call it? Cilantro in other places of the world? Mmm. Ah. Uh. Yeah, I love. I, 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 I've recently gone on a rampage when it comes to South American food. Um, 
since I found a place that I can buy um, masa harina and uh, masa lista from um, to make like tortillas and, and shit like that. I need to get a deep fryer so I can make chimichangas. Chimichangas would be so good. But um, I, I purposefully haven't actually looked up what the traditional filling for uh, empanadas are yet. I've instead, instead used fiddlings that I like the taste of. So I basically use a, a filling of... Um, um, yep, I shouldn't jump. Shouldn't drop. Okay. It's basically my, my own um, enchilada sauce recipe. Yeah. With chimkin. Mmm. Chicken thigh, because fuck chicken breast. Oh, that's so good. So good! Um... Oh yes, I need to hand in this uh, quest. Alright. Alright, where are we now? Where are we now? Biologist light. Alright, let's listen to what this guy has to say about Forest Valkai, I guess. Yeah, I, 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 it's just not good for my tummy. Chicken breast, um, it, it just, chicken breast is not, um, processed by your stomach as easily as, uh, chicken thighs are. But if you like it, you like it. I just don't. Hello, subscribers. I was... Motherfucker just, like, made me question all my life decisions back right then, just with his fucking voice. Holy shit. Currently in the process. This is- wait, oh, wait, 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 wait. <clears throat> he has a background of his suggesteds. Quantum locking will bro blow your mind. How does it work from the action lab? C cracking the cryptic. Spoiler alert. Today's quartal in a minute. What? Forest Valkai? based. Insane 400 ELO chess game. Pe wait, do people pe do people actually watch chess? Yeah, it's obviously a voice changer. It's probably um, voice mod or whatever it's called. For food theory, the many lies of something. He's got Matt Walsh up there. Okay, radical move against parenthood. Fuck off. Working on some new I, I mean, like, no shade. I'm just like, I, 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 I couldn't, I couldn't watch someone play chess. Uh, I, my, my AD, ADHD brain would, would fry. When something came yeah? along in my feed that I just had to drop everything and respond to it. Forest Valkai has these videos that keep showing up in my feed. I have yet to watch any of his videos, but they're scientists reacts to videos. And at first the question oh is, what kind of scientist is he? It's a little suspicious that he just labels himself as a scientist instead of biologist. Why is it not biologist reacts? Because <laughs> they're both, because because a biologist is a scientist. Oh no! I saw he is a biologist. Apparently, I guess. Yes, he is. He's he's like he's like an evolutionary biologist as well, my dude. Oh my gosh! He's going in blind to this. This is gonna be interesting. Mm -hmm. Gonna do a video on him to something, but I just wasn't in a hurry until this video showed up. First, the thumbnail says we agree. 
Also, this isn't a stream. This is this isn't a stream. This is a full video. Bad. So faith is bad. So it seems clear he has been watching way too much Aaron Raw because it seems like he most likely will have a very bad or. I mean, my early videos used a shitty voice changer, changer. So like you know, whatevs. Like <clears throat> I just decided to. The only reason that I stopped. The reason I stopped using a voice modulator because I'm like super um. Uh, insecure about my own voice and how it sounds. Um, not because I give a fuck about any what anybody else thinks. I don't need I don't need validation. It's okay. Don't don't worry about that. This is this is like only I I don't give a fuck what any what anyone else thinks. I care about what I think because like why should I care if someone else doesn't like my voice? I've got a I've got a I'm in a I'm in a long term relationship in which like my partner loves everything about me and vice versa. So like. But, like, yeah. So, I just, why? Why, though? Conflicting why? view of the definition of faith. But the video he's responding to is Genesis Apologetics. I recognize the faces. This is from a series... Yeah, the reason the reason why I stopped using a voice modul modulator is because I wanted to... I, I, I don't... I, I was hoping that would help other people um who have similar issues to like i don't know f relate to someone maybe and feel better i don't know if it will or has but that's why i don't use a voice modulator anymore videos that i really don't care for it's this whole pretend to be a conversation but it's scripted like one person is making an argument but the other person is so basically, a um, YouTube video, a reaction video. You you don't like reaction videos. What do you what What kind of videos does this guy make? When was this? This is nine months ago. Okay, so so it's since then. Dum 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 dum. My more controversial thing ratings. Animes, anime, 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 anime. Uh, gerrymandering genetics, genetic Trojan. GMS, gerrymandering genetics finale. What the hell is gerrymandering? Circular morality. Argue morality is subjective, define morality is subjective, hope no one notices. Oh, fuck. We only know that morality is subjective because it can't be proven to be objective. That, that, that's the only way we know that. Until, until objectivity can be conveyed through language... Yeah. Anyway, I'm not getting getting sidetracked with that. Like people who people who can't wrap their heads around a subjective reality, like just like need to read a philosophy book newer than I guess Nietzsche. Um. Yeah. So this guy is a skeptic and uses green as his uh, as his favorite uh, color, I suppose. Why is he using green? Oh, because he used green early on, and uh, it boosted his views, so he decided to do it. Continue doing that, maybe. <clears throat> so yeah, this is your average chub that you'd find um, being dumb in the Crucible uh, Discord server, basically. Christian anime, oh my gosh. So it's much cringe. Making the same argument, but I don't know. Conversation as if one person is teaching the other. We kind of saw the same thing with... Uh, I don't have the time to seek them out, honestly. ...response to their anime video. And it's just not a type of 
format that I like. But that being said, the information itself is still good. Now, all of this so far would have been fine. I could have still just skipped it and saved him for later. But Come at me, bro. Um, um, person. Scientist reacts to natural selection debunked. That is not the name of their video. It is evolution debunked. I'm at least 90% certain they do not have a video called natural selection debunked. And I'll double check that after i click on this video so this seems wait you you could have edited this to have that information right there uh -huh. scientist reacts Maybe. Sure. Um. Debate my my mon my my Pokemon mon mon mon. Uh, two fossil record debunked. Uh, no. Hey, okay. I'm just trying to find this video that uh, da, 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 it was what? How many months ago? It was four days. Oh, wow, four days ago, and this was nine months. Nine months. Okay. Natural selection debunked. Da da, da original video. Da, 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 da. Low busters. Wait, what? Bunking evolution with John and Jane. I love it when I when I do more work live than these people who can like positive like literally cut together videos like themselves. It's just like fucking hilarious. Full movie. Ah, oh, okay. Yep. Okay. Um, I'm gonna press play in a couple of seconds, and I'm just gonna and I'm gonna going to like destroy destroy this man's career. By the way, hold on. I got this is for a setup. This is gonna this is gonna be a good uh, setup. Uh. Alright, just gotta find this and double check it. Bada bop boom pow. There we go. Oh, actually, yeah. Are you ready for this? Everyone ready for this? Let's let's let's. Go from the start. I've set it all up. I've set it all up. At least 90% certain they do. Now, all of this so far would have been fine. I could have still just skipped it and saved him for later. And then I'm going to tell you the why. The title of his video. Scientists reacts to natural selection debunked. That is not the name of their video. It is evolution debunked. I'm at least 90% certain they do not have a video called natural selection debunked. And I'll... Turns out, 
turns out that Forrest Valkai is reacting to a chapter of a movie called Evolution Debunked. Pow. Oh! Fucking dumbass! I want to. I, please remind me by the end of this if he hasn't fucking like gone back to that. That's why. That's why, because he realized how fucking dumb he was. <laughs> so this seems very dishonest and something I want to respond to immediately. So I'm going to start watching the video. And um, I'm not going to call you dishonest, my dude, but I do want to explain. That scientist reacts to natural selection debunked. I, I just want to know where within the title of that video or the description he says he's reacting to a video called Natural Selection Debunked. Just want to lay that one there for you, you dumb fuck. Back to you in a second. Okay, before I watch the video, he's got a copyright claim, and we can already see some hints about his personality and uh, dishonest nature. Are you serious? You can't, you, yeah, he has this guy hasn't even, like, engaged with the video yet, and he's just, all he's doing is, um, poisoning the well. Literally, he's like, um, he's calling himself a scientist, and, um, not a biologist why doesn't he call himself a biologist um why should he for one thing who gives a fuck that's not dishonest he's like that that's literally the truth of the situation there's no dishonesty there you're just be you're just um uh, you know what i think it is you're just intimidated by people who actually have fucking degrees this is amazing this guy is this 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 guy just is just beautiful thank you Yes. This is the doom of man. I mean, At I get. At the end of this, he says, "Only a whiny baby or blithering idiot would copyright claim this video." This yep. does not sound like somebody who's very confident, not very secure in his position, or maybe not secure in his life. Oh my gosh, this guy doesn't even. He does this childish sentence about copyright claims, but also I noticed childish in his description. He's not. Childish. 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 I'm sorry. I'm sorry on every, for anyone who likes anime right now. Like, I think it's okay to like children's shit. But, like... I I'm sorry. But you're... You're... You're, um... Oh my gosh, and he's a Linux user. Of course he does. He he likes he watches like cartoons. Um, you you you're a lot of like a whole section of your content is like anime stuff like, and you're talking about how childish this person is. I'm sorry, but I there is nothing wrong with being childish or liking childish things or anime. But if you're going to uh, use it as a way of poisoning the well before you even engage with the person's topic of conversation, I'm sorry. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna call you out for being a weeb baby, a whiny little weeb baby, dude. Weasley little whiny weeb baby. Giving a link to Genesis Apologetics video that he is supposed to be reacting to. Not off to a good start in terms of. Yeah, fair enough. I had to do that as well. But, like, uh, he's not obligated to do that. Honesty. Or in terms of his confidence in his own position. Apparently he doesn't, he just doesn't trust people to go to the source. Oh, I wonder if he's gonna straw man. But first he spends about two minutes. I do, do... Dude, 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 don't start using fucking... Don't start using uh, big words that you don't understand. I'm sorry. 
If you are going to accuse other people of logical fallacies while immediately trying to poison the well before engaging with a person's ideas, I'm going to call you out for that. Honestly. This is absolute baby-brained debate bro bullshit. And I love it. Doing an ad read, then he watches a little bit of the video, then he... Oh, fuck. He did an ad read. He's getting paid for this. Oh my gosh. You know, I'm going to assume that he's a leftist. How dare leftists actually, you know, make money from leftist content? Because obviously things that I disagree with are leftist. Does another three minutes to complain about one of the characters, whether or not he's actually blind. And he does it specifically as a form. And if you have a problem with that joke right then, it was satire. And if you don't understand the joke, that's just on you, buddy. I'm just a comedian. Fucking stop trying to cancel me, bitch. Mudslinging. Like, you're using words that you don't even understand because you're engaging in them right now. Like, quite literally engaging in poisoning the well. Wait, I, I might have missed exactly what he said about that with who he was talking. Maybe he was talking oh, about himself. Hold on. Whether or not he's acting. Oh, I wonder if he's gonna straw man. So first he spends about two minutes doing an ad read. Then he watches a little bit of the video. Then he does another three minutes to complain about one of the characters, whether or not he's actually blind. And he does it specifically as a form of mudslinging. Are you not going- wait, is he not going to actually play that part? Is he not gonna, even going to fucking play that part? Yeah, I do. A road uh... There's plenty to do. Let's go down a path. Wait, I, I, I need to... This needs my attention. This, this, this needs my attention because I need to actually fucking look at this shit. What the hell? Holy shit. So, so, um... <sighs> hey, everybody! Welcome back to Re- Like, literally, you're building- Like, literally, you mention the word straw man. I wonder if he's going to straw man. And then you, like, immediately straw man his uh, entire video. What the fuck? Like, that's literally what you did. When it comes to evolution. Like, they're- Like... <sighs> Fuck. You can watch the, the 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 original video if you want for me, so that you can understand like why this is wrong. Um, but I, I've watched this video myself a few times. Um, there is a reason why he's uh, calling out the blind person thing. Like, th th there's reasons behind that. Um, and it would be John. Where is he? Huh. Let's see here. Ugh. Messing with my privacy. I'm you doing know, it in two times privacy, speed. You can always try NordVPN. Just go to nordvpn.com slash Labs and take control of your internet privacy today. Huh? Ow! John? Are you okay? Yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm fine. Are you sure you're okay? Yeah, no, I, I, I just got back from the eye doctors. Uh, they dilated my pupils. Um, getting here was a little dicey, but I'm starting to see a lot better now. Uh, but why are you talking to a coat rack? I thought you were looking a little taller. Oh, and it's not being funny just like that. So this, this is what we're doing now. This is how we're going to start this video off. Uh, just in case you were wondering, if they dilated his pupils, that wouldn't affect his vision in any way. All that means is that they used a medication, eye drops, to force his irises to contract and open up his pupils so that a doctor can basically look inside of his eyeballs. That's all that means. That doesn't mean that he's gonna be bumping into stuff or confusing a person with a coat rack or not able to read his text messages or anything like that. All it means is that his eyes are behaving as if they're in a dark room at all times. So he's gonna need to wear sunglasses to protect his eyes because normal amounts of light would be very painful and could potentially even damage his eyeballs. So until that medication wears off and his eyes can respond to light normally, he needs to wear sunglasses. That's all that's happening there. That's all that means. So this is just more of Genesis Apologetics continuing on their campaign to misrepresent the most basic concepts of science in order to prop up yeah, so easy to build up a fucking straw man if you don't actually react to the actual content in front of you. So like, so first, so like, I oh know this guy started it. This guy started it. I'm gonna fucking continue it because I'm a petty bitch. Um, used to you, this this uh toad toady motherfucker. Um, you know, a, a fucking weeb toad. Uh. Decides to spend the first uh, four minutes. He's there. He says, 
spends the first three minutes of his video cre creating a uh, poisoning the well and mudslinging uh, without engaging with anything, and uh, then engages immediately in a straw man. Uh, are you going to actually play the oh, original? So this is just more of Genesis Apologetics continuing on their campaign to misrepresent the. Why is he playing it in slow motion? Most basic concepts of science. In order is this to me? No. Ridiculous arguments, and now they're doing this whole campy bit about John not being able to see. And I get it. Like I'm not trying to be a spoil sport here and try to just nitpick everything. I understand you can't see and you bump into something that's funny. I get that. But the do you though? Because it kind of seems like you don't. Problem is, they started this video by saying that natural. I mean, like, he literally described why that was wrong and linked it to his problems with the video. Like, Forrest is obviously... The obvious point is that Answers in Genesis misrepresents scientific... Constantly mis misrepresents scientific information, and Forrest is making a joke about this. Yeah, he, he put- he didn't just put a pitch change on his voice, I thought he was putting a pitch change in his voice, um, like, using a voice modulator software, but no, he does this in post. This was done in post to the entire video. So not only does he not know how to record on separate fucking channels, he- he doesn't- like, he, he doesn't- he doesn't even know how to use a fucking voice modulator. Oh, so good. So good. Um, I saw this while I was scrolling through. I thought this would be funny uh, to just bring up. Um, um. Hello, subscribers. I'm back again, and... And he's got a voice modulator software. He just doesn't bother separating the audio uh, the audio and 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 he's literally posted a uh a, a tutorial on how he does this shit now i'm animated try to ignore my twitchy eyes as i still need to fiddle with it but uh i've got some emotion. i mean no shade against the um the um the uh vtuber thing because that's i don't know how to do that I, I think um, it comes down to having a at least 1080p, preferably 60 uh, FPS camera, like sitting right in front of you. Um, I'm gonna look at like th there's some interesting software. Nvidia has a um, AI thing now where it can f it basically fixes your eyes on the camera, which would be useful for VTuber use. Like any VTubers watching right now, have a look into the Nvidia AI um, software that. Um, points your eyes at the camera like seriously fuck how stop making me do your job for you you fucking idiot you fucking toad Production is blind and i will bet a million dollars that throughout this video there it kind of like shows how deep uh, how 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 like beta um this toad this toad's uh <laughs> fucking voices in real life i don't know Ugh, i hate myself for using the word beta but fuck it, it'll probably get under his skin, so... We're gonna keep calling back to that, either by using the word blind as a continuing buzzword... Yeah, but what does this have to do with your complaints about the skit? About their misrepresentation of how he became blind? Like, like... like the... Let me explain that to you. Toad, uh, he's making a joke about how answers in Genesis often misrepresents science. Uh, it, it's an offhand joke that he's then using to springboard into a conversation about how Answers in Genesis might use this analogy to misre misrepresent science within the rest of the video. So starting with a lighthearted joke and then diving into more serious topics. It's a very common thing with video essays. It really mm. cares that I they didn't actually blind the person in order to make their campy bit. We can all agree it's campy, but Forrest here is gonna keep beating this dead horse. For no Forrest literally said it was a funny bit as well. Like, he's just making a point to get his springboard off of that to talk about his topic. 
And if you don't understand that, bitch, you have videos on your channel talking about philosophy and you can't even understand basic video essay structure. Um, did you finish high school? Because they taught us this in English Lit. For the reason, then, it's entertaining to have him constantly point out that the- This is basic essay structure stuff. Lighthearted joke, springboard into heavier topics, and then use the last part of a section of um of conversation the last part to springboard into another part you're using connecting pieces of information to create a flow this is basics of literature i sucked at english lit and i still understand this shit dude go back to school character is not actually blind or is supposed to be blind or whatever evolution is a blind process no offense nah you don't get to say no offense to the person who can very clearly see after you just got done making fun of blind people sorry doesn't work that way do you supposedly have nothing to do yes it does it, it totally works that way you admitted it was campy they they don't need to be consistent about whether or not he's blind or not that is no holy shit i feel like i'm picking on someone who doesn't speak english as a first language like am i being ableist here or does this person not understand ab ableism maybe he just yeah like i don't know it's just a illustration get over it okay so his first uh major mistake is he doesn't hasn't seemed to have done his research on the history of eyes very common misunderstanding when we talk about the evolution of complex structures like eyeballs or limbs or whatever our eyes didn't evolve from nothing right to where they are today they didn't have to build up all the complex muscles and proteins or whatever else that's in them and just store them until they would eventually be useful at some point that makes no sense the temporal step yes evolution makes no sense agreed but What? Okay, so, so, all uh, right. Uh, you should look up the Cambrian explosion. All the eyes, well, hang on, he's got a picture. Not that difficult, it's just a step-by-step -step process that takes a long time, and we can still see every single one of those stages in living animals today, because again, they are all useful. They are, yes, we can see them all today, and we can see them all in the fossils. Complex eyes have always been around. You don't have the luxury of this step-by-step -step process, which really doesn't even work in the way you're describing but i would refer you to standing for truth for more info on the actual like hey this is his fucking uh area of study my dude this is fucking sad holy shit this is just fucking sad um this is like you know what it's like? It's like my one of it's like it's like a like my one of my like five year old nephews coming up to me and telling me that I'm wrong about something that like and, and I'm in and, and it's when I'm in a position where like I can either tell him that he's wrong and try and explain a complex complex uh subject that he's just that's just so far beyond him. Um This is how evolution works my dude you're reacting to someone who whose field of study is evolution and you can see the way that the eye, eyes have evolved through the fossil record but nope apparently um if you're going to claim that um that that's not true then you need to actually show it way you're describing but i would refer you to standing for truth ah. i'm sorry but um you'd have no sort you have no sources in your description therefore i i decide i have decided that you are poisoning the well and uh straw manning and uh you are uh very dishonest because you can't uh, put sources in the video i am not a geneticist exact way that they are yeah he is dude uh, he 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 is he studies this 
He has a PhD. Because they can only work the exact way they are in the current phase that they're in. And you're missing in the current phase they're in. What exactly is he trying to say there? Like, think about his I argument. He seems to be contradicting himself. He said these no? things only work in the phase they're in. But when yes. he wanted to explain I evolution, he said it could, it kept working in each phase. So which is, yes. can it work in every phase or only yes. in the current phase? Okay. Yes. He... English is not your first language. I'm sorry. Pay attention to the next part. This is his next big mistake, and I think it's his biggest mistake in this whole video. It's going to evolve, because life is always evolving. We haven't hit the peak every single time a species reproduces. It is evolving, and it's getting more interesting and more exciting. See, he's equivocating on the word evolution, and he'll do this a lot more in this video when he complains that John and Jane, I think it was, that John and Jane keep defining evolution in order to disprove evolution, but they're not defining evolution. They're defining natural selection, and Forrest here keeps equivocating. Wait, Toad, is this, is their video about debunking evolution, or is it about debunking natural selection here? It seems like you have done the, uh, you're, you're the one equivocating, uh, what the video means right now. Natural selection with evolution. Oh, At no point amazing. does he actually give a proper definition of evolution, which he is consistent on. While John and Jane, on the other hand, actually seem pretty consistent with their definition. Basically, universal common descent. That would be evolution. Natural selection is not evolution. Saying natural selection is evolution is like saying my t the tires on my car are my car. If from start to finish, like the formation of a galaxy. And their argument is that because you can't observe serious conversation about it. You see, stand these things about fiction books and breaks them down into I need to find this part because he literally just said just we actually just saw this Damn it where was it Phyla Admittedly, I'm mainly saying all of this because I realized immediately after I released it that I should have put all of For example. I feel like now is as good a time as any to remind everybody that kind is not a biological term. In biology, we group organisms based on their phylogenetics, or their evolutionary relationships to each other. And there are three main ways to do that based on- Like, I, I, I don't know, like there's a fantastic um, section of this one, like, um, like where, oh, fuck.
So when evolution code can't make better, it is just tears apart almost the new person and the boring arguments. All this dude is a comp star. Variation, different ways to chase eight hundreds of money to give them the my west somebody. Do they evidence US that rules that it's like when a child invents a new game on the playground and then constantly comes up with new rules that you didn't know when it's dependent on the how it means. It voids all endless amounts of all the like literally like I I I I fuck I I feel like I'm like going crazy but from what your driver of evolution is true but evolution somehow isn't true and that might seem innocuous enough i mean that description of even if you isn't the same as proving another diversity and the genesis doesn't get that they seek to gather evidence for it as two competing religions so they're not just saying that evolution isn't true who the creator is well the verb may have the correct understanding of the correct interpretation a mechanism is the number of the reasons we talked about before but rather than continuing to dig into that one that was a little bit of a ideology which myself is for cards some basic complete thing and just those three things is really that mutate election from which genetic analysis revealed no, i can't find it But like Natural literally, of literally Forrest Valkyrie has made that point before. And I can't find it, unfortunately, so. John not being able to see. And I get it. Like, I'm not trying to be a spoil sport here and try to just nitpick everything. I understand. You can't see and you bump into something that's funny. I get that. But the problem is, they started this video by saying that natural selection is blind. And I will bet a million dollars that throughout this video, they're going to keep calling Oh, wait, this isn't it. Evolution were true, natural selection would only be a part of it. You can't say because natural selection, therefore evolution. Th this is... Dude, he never said... He, he's never said that, dude. Mistakes. Like, oh. literally, that's not what he said. I time oh mistake and i think it's his biggest mistake in this whole video is going to evolve because life is always evolving we haven't hit the peak every single time a species reproduces it is evolving and it's getting more interesting and more exciting See, yeah so 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 he's a this fucking toad uh, it, he doesn't say any of this he has not said any of what you're saying here and like you are a fucking an idiot that John and Jane keep mm. defining evolution in order to disprove evolution, but they're you, not- You're literally making a straw man out of this entire argument before you've even heard what he's had to say, what he has to say. This video is almost halfway through, and this is a half hour video. He's at the beginning. They're defining natural oh, selection. Oh no, you forgot Forest to defrost the chicken, chicken breast. Replicating natural selection with evolution. At no, point no, he doesn't. When when has he done this? Fucking show me when he's Does done he it. Actually um. Yes, he is consistently gives the definition of evolution. Evolution is a change in the allele structure of an organism. That is what evolution is. A change in the allele stu structure of an organism, which is always happening, demonstrably. Like, only someone who doesn't believe in evolution is going to have a problem with that. Only someone who's a fucking idiotic weeb toad is going to think that. Jane, on the other hand, actually seem pretty consistent with their definition. Basically, universal common descent. That would Fuck, I'll debate this cunt. It's not evolution. Saying natural selection is evolution is like saying my- This is the definition of a straw man. Okay, let me just- let me- let me, like, put, put you- let me, like, lay this out for everyone right now. I'm going to show you a literal straw man in the mo in the easiest way, okay? Um, okay. All right, da, 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 da. where is it? Natural selection. Okay, this is the straw man. Natural selection. And forest here keeps... Forest here keeps... Equivocating natural selection with evolution. Equivocating natural, natural selection with evolution. Um, he has not done that. So that is the straw man that uh, Toad has 
created here. At no point has Forrest Valkai done any of these things. At no point during this video does Toad once, once engage with anything more than a, than a straw man version of Forrest Valkai's arguments considering that he literally argues against himself using things that Forrest says in the video that he's reacting to. We give a proper definition of evolution, which he is consistent on, while John and Jane, on the other hand, actually seem pretty consistent with their definition, basically universal common descent. That would be evolution, natural... No. Uh, evolution is a change in allele frequency within an organism. That, that's that's the theory of evolution boiled down. Forrest has consistently said that over and over throughout all his videos. And you would know this if you did any sort of research into this. Like, you can see live what I do when I come across dumbasses like this. I, I go back, I look at other their other videos. If there's something relevant, I go into their other videos and try and come up with uh, an understanding of who this person is. You are a person with an inflated sense of uh, intelligence because you have learnt the definitions of... Um, uh, logical fallacies, yet you have no ability to actually apply these logical fallacies to other people and are in fact engaging in every single one of the ones you've laid out so far. The lack of self-awareness in this weeb toad is fucking hilarious. Selection is not evolution. Saying natural selection is it's that is a literal straw man look like number one the claim that forest is equivocating natural selection with evolution um you need to back up that claim you are posting this video in post you lowered the audio you edited this video and you could have easily shown a clip of Forrest making that equivocation. Why have you not done this? Because there is no point in this video in which he has made that equivocation. Therefore, your argument is a straw man, and you're literally not even engaging with the video. I do better work than you live. It's fucking pathetic. Natural selection is not evolution. Saying natural selection is evolution is like saying my t the tires on my car are my car. If evolution were true, natural selection would only be a part of it. You can't say because natural selection, therefore evolution. Th this is one of the biggest mistakes all evolutionists make, and it is. The yeah, um, evolutionist is not a term. I only say that like ironically. Um. Forrest Valkai is a evolutionary biologist. Um, he uh, constantly makes the point that natural selection is just one part of um, evolutionary theory. Uh, the fact that you are making that assumption about all evolutionary biolog biologists is just shows how fucking dumb you are and how little you understand. All you, do you know what? Um, all you know. Um, is basically tidbits you've learned from Ken Ham um, and apologetics. All you've learned are buzzwords. You don't understand anything about what you're actually talking about here. You, you fucking call evolution just like, um, ju just fucking, what does he call evolution? It's amazing. Uh... Uh, he's equivocating on the word evolution, and he'll do this a, a lot more in this video. Yeah, you, you need to show how that is true. You can't just literally, like, if you are going to use a nice, tasty, um, intelligent-sounding word, uh, that's great, that's fine, but you need to demonstrate how Forrest's argument is an equivocation. You can't just say, oh, he's equivocating. What is he equivocating and how did he say that? Yeah, Fucking hell. Claims that John and Jane, I think it was, that John and Jane keep defining evolution. Again, you, you can, you have the ability to edit this. You did edit this. 
John and Jane, I think it was. Like, just cut that out. Just cut that. You're not even fucking live. It's not even going to show up as a jump cut. ...in order to disprove evolution, but they're not defining evolution. Yeah, common descent. Uh, yeah, that's not the... Oh my gosh, does Wikipedia... Is that... Please tell me that that's the first sentence on Wikipedia. Yeah. Okay, so he he he's referring to common descent as a part of things like lich. Wait, this motherfucker just claimed that Forest Valkai is equivocating um, natural selection with evolution, and then immediately. You equivocates, literally equivocates. So, um, so, 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 Toady Boy, Toady Weeby Boy just made the straw man argument that Forest Valkai is equivocating evolution with, uh, natural se selection, something he does not do once throughout the entire video. Go watch it for yourself. Linked it. Tell me if I'm wrong. Um, but please timestamp that for me, because if you tell me that I'm wrong and don't give me any fucking source, then go fuck yourself. Um, so that straw man of equivocation, he literally, literally, every, this motherfucker just equivocated common descent with evolution. Something that common descent is just like natural selection, a component of evolution. You did the thing you accused someone else of. That's three times in this video now. Holy shit, this is the dumbest, dumbest chud I've ever come across. Sorry, this is not the right video. They're defining natural selection, and Forrest here keeps equivocating natural selection with evolution. At no point... to try to say the natural selection doesn't know what it's doing and can't possibly have a plan in mind and they're using john as a prop to like kind of build this concept okay so um also also to toad toad you're at a part of the video now you are uh five minutes into forest valkyrie's video where did john and jane define natural selection because the only thing that John and Jane have done so far in this first five minutes of video have made a joke about blindness. What are you talking about, dude? Do you even have anything other than bullshit? Does he actually give a proper definition of evolution which he is consistent on? While John and Jane, on the other hand, actually seem pretty consistent with their definition, basically. You could literally, like, look at any one of his videos talking about evolution. He had... Forrest has a literal... A literal, um... This series is sponsored... Fucking series on evolution in which he defines and talks about this stuff. I want to see... I, so, Forrest is a biologist and an es educator who specializes in evolutionary biology and bioanthropology. He is the most qualified person to talk about this issue. Awesome app that lets you learn real math and science in a hands-on way. I am really interested. Everybody to have your brain active and engaged. Everybody brilliant for sponsoring this series. Now let's learn... Let's... Please, please. Life. I mean, it might not happen, but this will be brilliant. Life on Earth is extraordinarily diverse. More than 1.3 million species have been identified so far, and there are an estimated several million more still out there, just waiting to be discovered. Even just the species that we know of show a glorious amount of variability. The blue whale, for example, is the largest animal on Earth. They can reach lengths of almost 30 meters, or 98 feet, and weigh as much as 150,000 kilograms, or 330,000 pounds. A virus, on the other hand, is remarkably small. Most measure in at just around 100 or so nanometers across. That's over a thousand times smaller than the width of a human hair, and over 10 billion times smaller
than the length of a blue whale. How can two things that are this different in nature be explained by the same theory? Viruses aren't even technically alive, so how can we understand them and whales alike by using just one model? That is the power of evolution. Without it, biology is just a pile of random facts which may seem interesting on their own, but make no meaningful picture as a whole. But with it, biology becomes perhaps the most intellectually satisfying and deeply inspiring science of them all. The study of evolution helps us stop the spread of disease, grow bigger and more nutritious crops, take care of the ecosystems around us, and make sense of the natural world. It allows us to reach hundreds of millions of years into the past and trace a lot of the It helps us to understand where we came from, where we're going, and how literally all life on Earth is connected both to each other and to the rest I of the universe. My name is Forrest this is going to take world maybe world five world minutes of, of time right now. understand a little bit about how evolution works and how it informs all of biology, from exploring life's simplest molecules to analyzing whole ecosystems. Because of the great biologist... Okay, so it's going to go into the intro in a sec. In I'm just going to skip through the intro. Whales, dolphins, and porpoises are all classified together in an order that we call cetacea. There are about 90 different species of cetaceans in the world, and superficially, they look a lot like fish, with their streamlined bodies and their broad, flat tails. Oh, come on, do it for me, we'll please. They are, in fact, mammals. They have fur, they lactate, they give birth to live young. But if you look even deeper than that, and I mean like really, literally deeper, you'll see that they also have hip and hind leg bones embedded deep inside their bodies. Now, how oh. would that possibly make any sense? These animals spend their whole lives swimming. They don't even have hind legs, so why on earth would they need bones there? They don't anymore. Cetaceans evolved from animals that walked on land. Their hip and leg bones are just leftovers from that evolutionary history. Looking back over the fossil record, we can see a long transition from Indohyus to Pachycetus to Ambulocetus to Cuchycetus to Durodon and then finally to modern whales. Look again at that transition. And in the same way, you can do this with eyes. So, like, kind of debunking that. I was hoping that he would uh, do the the whole what is uh, what is um, uh, evolution um, and all of that. Uh, from the start, but it is definitely more aimed at people who have who are just starting to get interested into the concept of evolution. A bit. Watch how those back legs get smaller and smaller. They have one blowhole, still have two. Those animals are half of a whale. None of those animals tried to swim a little bit deeper or hold their breath a little bit longer until they evolved into a whale out of sheer willpower. These fossils are snapshots. They give us glimpses into a process that took around 50 million years. Each generation in this lineage fit into their ecological niche and lived in their environment just like any other animal would. Starting with Indohyus, just catching fish in the shallow waters. Also, yeah, this is the, the, this is him uh, describing just how evolution works. So you can apply that to how eyes have evolved. Like, yeah, it's it's sad, but uh, basically, yeah. It is a change in the allele structure, basically a change in heritable um, traits over generations. So the that's the definition. Descent, that would be evolution, natural. No. Universal common descent... You are making an equivocation between evolution and common descent. Common descent is a component of evolution in the same way that you just tried and failed to claim Forrest Valkai was doing, which... Your selection is not evolution. Say Why is it always the guys who can't make, make a decent argument who think that they're really amazing at making videos about arguments? I don't understand. Is evolution is like saying my t the tires on my car are my car. If well, you can say... Saying common descent is uh, evolution is like saying that the tires on your car are your car. Yes. Evolution were true, natural selection would only be a part of it. You can't say because natural selection, therefore evolution. Th this is one of the biggest mistakes all evolutionists make, and it is the biggest mistake made in this video. So what are you going to say when we do eventually build a computer that's far more complicated than our own brains? What then? Then we'll say it was designed. Are you going to say it's designed? No? Then move on. Just because we... Hold on a second. This is hilarious you fall into every logical fallacy that you failingly attempt to straw man forest with. Go back to school. You haven't figured something out? Does anyway, let's go. When we do eventually build a computer that's far more complicated than our own brains, what then? Then we'll say it was designed. Are you going to say it's designed? No? Then move on. Just because we haven't figured something out doesn't mean that it's magical. Actually, technically it kind of does. Depending on how you define magic. And you... The art of influencing or predicting events and uh, producing marvels using hidden natural forces, also supernatural art, 
the art of controlling the actions of spiritual or superhuman beings, sorcery, magic, magos from the man, m members of the learned, learned and priestly class, um, ah, legerdemain, optical illusions, um, so derived from uh, pertaining to magic, pr working on produced by en enchantment, having super supernatural qualities or powers, uh, to produce effect as if by magic. Ma like, um, Forrest is obviously using magic as a colloquialism to... Uh, he's using magic as a colloquialism here. And the, and the meaning of what he's saying is that uh, is is to be supernatural, to just pop into existence. Um, God, he, he, he's talking about things happening without scientific reasoning. That That's it. And if you don't understand that and are deciding to dick ride a dictionary and change the definition of magic to suit your needs, then like... I, I don't know what the actual logical fallacy, there must be a name for it, but I just call it dick riding the dictionary. You can easily define magic as anything you don't understand. My cell phone is magic. I have no idea how it works. I have a very... That's not magic, dude. That's just... That's called ignorance, dude. You are describing ignorance and trying to classify that as magic. I don't call it magic that I don't know nuclear physics. I know that it works. Do you call gravity magic? My dude. What the fuck? This guy is dumbest. Holy shit. But the rest of the rest is just magic. And if that's not how you define magic, then what would Nobody defines magic that way because they don't want to look like a fucking dumbass. Holy shit. That actually makes sense with the sentence you just said. There are these things in language. Um, uh, we call them social cues. We call them lang. We call it language structure. We call it social norms. There are a range of things that we understand about the world, and a lot of this comes down to um, centers in our brain that um are that that work well with empathy that's how we communicate communication basically is what it means um you can derive context from what someone is saying and understand it through what you understand about a person what you know about a person what you know about a topic facial expressions body language that context now what you are doing right now is trying to remove all context and instead redefine the word magic to suit your needs in order to make some weird fucking argument that you think your cell phone is magic why why do you have to jump through so many hoops in order to tear someone down? Okay, like, you know, there are much better ways to tear people down. Hey, this guy, Forrest Felkai, shouldn't be wearing a fucking crew. Like, that. that's just, no, no, v-neck. V-neck that shit. Your shoulders look tiny wearing that t-shirt you need a v-neck so you can see your uh his you he, forrest should be wearing a v-neck so that he can see, so we can all see his um collarbone structure and broaden his shoulders like there are objective things that we can do to tear down another person without having to make yourself look so dumb that you think that cell phones are magic Wow. Wow. Because John and Jane certainly didn't use the word magic. Evolution halfway through this video, by the way. Um, also, halfway through this video, um, and we still haven't actually gotten to any more of John and Jane's content, so... What it's trying to build, because it isn't... Oh, you poor, deluded individual. It's trying to build anything. It's... 
Okay, so that was it. He, he's just deluded because he said some. He just said something factual. Just about what works in the moment. What helps any one individual survive and reproduce, which does not always work. John and Jane actually bring this up later, and the point goes completely over his head. But sometimes you just get lucky. Beneficial mutations. Give me a second. Uh, da 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 da. Guest star. Da, da, da. How do I, uh... I'm a boomer, sorry. Such as... I've just, ready. I've just linked, I've just linked in my Twitch. If they happen at all, depending on how you define beneficial, because there are still reductive mutations. Again, with the dick riding the dictionary. This is awesome. Beneficial in the moment, which is what he's arguing for, but you lost information to get that benefit. Yes, it would, like the lost information fallacy. Yeah, like that, that is such an old thing and you can watch any one of Forrest's videos to like have a complete not a break complete breakdown of these issues like we just watched Forrest's video who where he actually breaks down why the the idea that you lose information through mutations is wrong like there is a fantastic one somewhere in amongst this um uh, somewhere in amongst this one uh just trying to remember it um, where was it? What video was it? Um, oh, shit. Losing of loss loss of information. I think it was. I think it was the last. Um, I think it was the last ounces in Genesis video. Um, on Reacteria. I don't know, like, Reacteria is basically where you're going to find all of these, um, hilarious fucking fallacies. Uh, da 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 Biggest, uh, what is it? Biologist versus, oh, here we go. Do mutations prove creationism? Look at this. Look, an entire fucking video devoted to debunking this idea. <sighs> you're welcome. It's just hilarious when people think that they can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with someone who actually has a PhD in what they're talking about, and then try and prove their point by failing to define, um, failing to, uh, using the, uh, the concepts of logical fallacies without being able to um, back them up with what they're talking about, and actually have videos that they have edited without doing any, making any effort into actually clipping the things into context that they're talking about. All he's doing is saying logical fallacy, logical fallacy, logical fallacy, and then expecting the audience to just agree because it is just based on a echo chamber but even if you have the benefit you can still die by other means that are <laughs> what is this argument <laughs> what is this argument sometimes you just get lucky beneficial mutations are it that's 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 that, that's what natural selection is dude <laughs> Yeah, yes, a mutation that is been, when we have mutations, mutations pop up every, t like, all the time, and there's a lot of different things, evolutionary, that come into that. Uh, natural selection is just one of those things. <laughs> Sometimes you just get lucky. Yeah, you're, de you're describing selection pressure under natural selection right there. Exceedingly rare if they happen at all, depending on yeah. how you define yes. it, because yes. there are still red yeah, yeah, we define beneficial through positive selection pressure. That that's that's like high school biology levels of understanding. 
Fuck. Mutations I, like, I, I assume, I, 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 I don't know, but it kind of sounds like maybe English is not his first language, so, and I don't, don't really want to, like, double down on g g getting into that. But it also sounds as if, if he is from the US, it makes me so sad to think that the education system is so bad that they don't that people from the US a don't understand basic biological principles of evolution uh, and b don't understand basic essay structure about how to basically haven't studied English lit. Do you guys not have English lit in high school? Fuck. Like that that's like so sad. Beneficial in the moment, which is what he's arguing for. But you lost information to get that benefit. But no, you didn't lose information. That's not how uh, mutation work. Mutation is a change in gene structure. Now that can be a loss of information, but it can also be a change of information. Again, Forrest has done full videos describing these things. Like you're talking about someone who's field it is to talk about these things so it's hilarious to think that you can debunk them um mutations can even result in the gaining of information the idea that mutation is a loss of information is something is basically a thought terminating cliche of cultish language created by creationists who have not read a scientific paper since the fucking 80s where we discovered this shit. And if you have the benefit, you can still die by other means that are not related to the benefit you had. And then he tries some- Yeah, no shit. Yeah, no shit. I don't know what that was supposed to, supposed to prove, like, um, evolution is, uh, like, evolution is the study of populations, not of individuals. Like, one duck didn't evolve into one lizard, you dumb fuck. Make a Lego, anal Lego analogy, which I'm not going to play because it's too long. But it's unclear whether his analogy is meant if the Legos are supposed to represent genes or physical traits. No, I think his Lego analogy, the bricks, are supposed to represent individual creatures. And if, if those are you going to play this shaved off, they get thrown away. That creature is a mutant. Wait, so so wait, so so I'm starting to get understand this guy's um um video essay structure. So basically, the guy who his pinned comment here, Forrest starts by poisoning the well. My dude, you are literally creating your straw man argument before allowing the argument to be said. You are literally poisoning the well. Let me tell you what poisoning the well means. Poisoning the well was me at the start of talking about you bitching about your anime weeb shit. And talking about, you know, uh, like your voice being weird. Like, that's me poisoning the well. But you're doing it even worse, in which you are talking about, you are, ba you are taking what he is about to say, and then telling your audience what they are supposed to think about it. Let me, uh, let me, sh I, I, Legos are supposed to represent G like, he, he, you haven't actually played anything from Forrest Valkai before putting your, um, imposing your opinions on this. This is the literal definition, the literal definition of poisoning the well. You dumb fuck. You dumb fuck. Who literally has videos on his channel. On your channel, you have videos claiming, like, trying to, trying to define logical fallacies on your videos. Refuting rationality, material content, double feature, uh, regressing movements, slick straw man, informational language, irrelevant points. Like, I can read all of these logical fallacies that you claim to, uh, to be applying to other people. Yeah. Yet the first video I've ever seen of yours is just you poisoning the well and strawmanning the conversation. Like, 
you haven't reacted to I don't know what this is. I don't know what I don't know what to call this. Is is it, I guess it's a Visi video essay. Um but you're not reacting to things because if you're reacting you would be doing what I do and that is playing your video and then reacting to it to try and prove your point. Instead, you are making a straw man out of an argument that you are about to play and then applying what you think your audience should think about that argument before they've even said it. That is the definition of poisoning the well. I really hope, I really hope that you clicked on the link that I just posted on your video. Oh, wait a second, did he delete it? <laughs> oh no, no, it's just not showing up, but yeah. I hope you clicked on this video. I hope you're learning something, dude. Are exceedingly rare if they happen at all, depending yes. on how you define yes. beneficial. Because yeah. Yeah. there are still okay. reductive. See, see, like what you're doing right now is making an argument against something that Forrest hasn't actually brought up in the video. There's another word for that. It's called straw man. Mutations that are beneficial in the moment, which is what like, and and one of the best things that uh, these chuds seem to do as well is they talk about they they use things that are almost true, so that if someone like me disagrees with them, it's like, what are you saying that uh, are you saying that uh, that oh like earlier how I called it how I called him out for be for uh, pre claiming an equivocation that Forrest uh, never made. You know, because it is true that evolution is not equivoc equivocable to natural selection, me disagreeing with him, oh, it's so easy for him to turn around and say, ah, so you're saying that you can equivocate evolution with natural selection? Pfft, oh, you evolutionoids, you evolutionoidists, oh, all of you. I I'm sorry, I'm not an evolutionary biologist, but I can tell bullshit when I see it. And I can tell you, I can, I can sniff out you hiding bad arguments between facts. It's really easy to do, and it's really funny. Arguing for, but you lost information to get that benefit. But even if you have yeah, the benefit, we went through you this. can still die by other means that are not related <laughs> to the benefit you had. And then he tries to make a Lego, anal Lego analogy, which I'm not going to play because it's too long. But it's unclear whether his analogy. So you're going to make an argument about his uh, next point, and you're not going to play it. Do you think I'm not going to notice that you didn't play any of his uh, argument that you poisoned the well on? Like you didn't. That wasn't even a poison the well then. That was literally just trust me, bro. I can't remember what logical fallacy that is, but uh, yeah. Uh, I'm not going to waste my time on a Twitch stream, especially one that can't let a person complete their sentence before butting in with something not important. <laughs> not going to waste the time. So you did waste your time. <laughs> Welcome to the Shady Harbor. I hope you have a wonderful time. Is meant if the Legos are supposed to represent genes or physical traits. No, I think his Lego analogy, the bricks, are supposed to represent individual creatures. And if, if those... Oh, what bro all right. No, we're getting context. Fuck this guy. Except the funny things that a blind thing would look like, what blindness makes you do. So they're just using visually impaired people. But... I think this is a really bad time. Oh, so, alright, so we've reached a part of the, uh, part of the, uh, video. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I can do it. Give me I just read it out. Point right there. If his pupils were dilated, and he took off his sunglasses in a brightly lit room like that, that would be excruciating. So, they have no idea how anything works, and they're just making a stupid pointless joke. What's the point, you know? Just what's the point of any of this? We better get to studying. What are we studying today? Natural selection. I've already started reading it. There's a great definition in our biology textbook. Natural selection is a process by which organisms with variation most suited to their local environment survive and leave more off Yep. Okay. 
So evolutionary theory holds that natural selection is one of the forces that drives evolution. How's that work? Well, evolutionists say mutation happens in the sex cells of a creature and its offspring exhibits the resulting trait difference, like a new feather color or something. The trait can give it an advantage or a disadvantage. A beneficial mutation would cause it to become a little better at surviving. Oh, by the way, sit. Apologies, didn't mean to press, press that button. Um, notice how what I'm doing right now is I'm playing the video and then I'm going to apply my argument against what's said in the video. Like, you know, being an honest content creator. So, its descendants, and thus trait, eventually outnumber the others. Then the scenario repeats with another variation, supposedly driving evolution forward. But rather than this process producing just the varieties we see among animal kinds, they believe this process built those animals from completely different ones, and can eventually lead to one kind of animal turning into another. And here in the biology text- It's funny how- it's funny- like, I know that I'm not supposed to be reacting to, like, uh, John and Jane themselves, but it's funny how they, um... show the basic definition of natural selection, and then don't show the part where they- where, uh, they say- claim that ev evolutionary biologists think that, uh, animals just get put together with different animals. Just- 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 just interesting that that doesn't get shown up on screen, because but I'm not sure that's written in the textbook. In the because of its white coat. And it also shows that if you start with yellow and green grasshoppers, two different traits inherited- Actually, like, polar bears are even more interesting when it comes to evolution. Like, they've literally evolved to have hollow, um, hairs, which are more, um, are, uh, more... Uh, I fucking can't remember the word. Insulators. That one, amazing insulators. Like, the, the evolution of the polar bear is amazing. On the parents, the green may outnumber the yellow in a green environment because they are harder for birds to see and catch. In all fairness, that's a fairly decent explanation of natural selection. Like, if you were to take all of the supposed... I don't know if I want to find this, uh, this Lego topic, section. That would be a pretty solid way to define natural selection. So, kind of a good job, you guys. So, did the grasshoppers think through how other animals would avoid it if it looked more camouflage? Still waiting for him to equivoc equivocate um, evolution with uh, natural selection. Didn't know how to genetically engineer itself to express those colors. Did a polar bear engineer its own white coat? Damn it, John, I was just saying something nice about you. No, but that's not what evolutionists believe. They think that these changes happen randomly in the DNA, influencing an individual's survivability. Evolution yes. is a blind process, no offense. I mean, we don't believe that. We know that from the study of the uh, evolutionary theory. Like, the, the things that come under that, we can tell this through the fossil record, we can tell this through uh, heritable traits, we can see this through, um, you know, experimentations, we can watch things happen. Like, I showed you earlier, like, the tiger snake literally has evolved in the last hundred years, and we've actually tracked this and observed this. So, like, this is an observable, um, not fact, what's the word, uh, an observable uh, phenomenon. Nah, do, do, you don't do, 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 do. no offense to the person who can very clearly see after you just got done making fun of life. Oh, here we go. Sorry, doesn't work that way, dude. Intelligent choices supposedly have nothing to do with it. Evolutionists believe natural selection figured out how to design an eye. But how? It would have to build and preserve over who knows how many generations, hundreds of complicated interacting eye parts, including proteins that were all useless until the whole package was eventually assembled. Uh, has, has, like, I want to, I want to be, like, fair. Has Toad actually told a joke in this video yet that I've missed? Because I'm sorry if he has. I'm not going to go back and look because fuck that. No, wouldn't at all. I can't get too mad at this because this is a very, very common misunderstanding. We talk about the evolution of complex structures like eyeballs or limbs or whatever. Our eyes didn't evolve from nothing right to where they are today. They didn't have to build up all the complex muscles and proteins or whatever else that's in them and just store them until they would eventually be useful at some point. That yeah, no shit. Sense. Animals for flight. Our navigation system so tiny it can fit in the head of a monarch butterfly, which is smaller than a pin. Again, this is the problem with the whole irreducible complexity argument. You're looking at modern species with admittedly very complex yeah. and intricate systems. So, like, um, uh, if you're still if you're still watching, uh, Toady Boy, uh, look up uh, irreducible com uh, irreducible complexi complexity complexity irreducible complexity. Um, that is one of, that is the one of the major fallacy logical fallacies that, that that's a logical fallacy that uh, creationists use against uh, biologists. Um, it's been debunked many times, and there are... <laughs> yeah, it's been debunked so many times um, since, you know, it's been... It was uh, invented. Um, like, the original argument was based on, like, a mousetrap, which ma all the parts had to be in a mousetrap, and then someone came along and, like, made a evolution of the mousetrap, which would work uh, under the idea... Un un in within the, the structure of an evolutionist argument... Uh, evolutionary argument. <laughs> so many words. So many big so words. These things could only possibly work the exact way that they are because they can only work the exact way they are in the current phase that they're in, and you're missing all of yes. these other steps. Every single time a species reproduces, it is evolving and it's getting more. And the fact that you don't understand that is amazing. You have to remember.
genes just go away? Yes! Meaning that natural selection has no power in selecting individual genes? No! Well, it can't see genes, just whole organisms. Kind of like me trying to help you pick up swatches that I can't even see. You can freaking see, John! Also, natural selection is supposed to mean survival of the fittest. But what if <clears throat> someone, nobody in particular, you know, had their eyes dilated and was leaving when they knocked over the fish tank in the waiting room? You did. Anyway, if exactly half of them died because I did, they didn't get them in the water, was it survival of the fittest? <laughs> no, it was survival of the luckiest. Yeah, that's called a disturbance. You're not breaking any new ground here. A random event that kills random members of a population could have a variety of different effects or no effect at all. Especially if that event happens on a semi-regular basis, at least you could see no... Or tiger snakes on an island um, could be faced with the possibility of not being able to get food because the, the their prey is too large for them to eat, causing them to evolve over a short period of time due to high selection pressure, larger jaws which has recently been observed in a paper in Australia. Um, we, 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 we've observed uh, natural selection pressure and evolution with our eyes, which have evolved to be Noticeable like they are. Even evolutionary results. Like imagine <sighs> a beach that's full of boulders. The smallest boulders are going to roll... It's amazing how when you actually play the video... Time the, tide comes in or out. ...the biggest boulders are going to stay right where they are and never move, whereas the medium boulders are going to roll a little bit... Where's this, where's this Lego boulders, argument? And ...barnacles and things move, they can only... A normal one. Which one? Where's this fucking Lego, Lego shit? Did you like literally skip over every explanation that he made? Does he never actually talk about uh, Lego at all in this video? Holy shit. Well, I'm just gonna call you bullshit. Kind of like me trying to help you pick up swatches. I'm just gonna call bullshit on that. Damn. Shaved off. They get thrown away. That creature is a mutant and no good. Say which I'm not gonna play because it's too long. Because any one individual survive and reproduce, which does not always survive and reproduce. Individual survive and reproduce. <laughs> no. It's very hard to like do your job for you. It's really fucking annoying. So let's pass this. His work. John and Jane actually bring this up it's later. Just about what works the, the point moment. goes completely over his head, but sometimes you just get lucky. Beneficial mutations are ex. Every single time DNA is copied, there's a big chance for mutation. There's copy errors all the time, and those could do nothing, or they could be beneficial, or they could be deleterious. So their argument here that they keep making that mutations are bad, or even that most mutations are bad, is complete nonsense. Every I saw this while so I was going through. Use of the word mutants. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Property of the random process of just stacking. Come along hey! Say, ah, look, see, there must be some intelligent design here. They must have had a plan. Oh, I found the Legos what thing. In the moment, what helps any one individual survive? Okay, here we go. You're right. Natural selection is just a process. It doesn't have a brain. It can't think or design. It had no foreknowledge. No shit. To accomplish. So what are you going to say when we do eventually build a computer that's far more complicated than our own brains? What then? Just because we haven't figured something out doesn't mean that it's magical. Evolution doesn't need any foreknowledge of what it's trying to build because it isn't trying to build anything. It's just about what works in the moment. What helps any one individual survive and reproduce? Think about it like a pile of Legos. Only some of the bricks have all the pegs shaved off and some of the bricks have all the holes filled in with glue. Only some of them. Yeah, he talks about the luckiness. Um, he talks about um, the luckiness thing um, later on and... and uh, 
addresses that argument. So, kind of dishonest of you not to show that. Rare, if they happen at all. Mutations are exceedingly rare if they happen at all. Okay. Um, this guy is, this guy is, uh, uh, qualified to talk about these issues, like, and uh, any bio biology textbook is going to Two things. One, back this up. Lying. As we've talked about several times before on this show, every single time DNA is copied, there's a big chance for mutation. There's copy error. So I'm going to believe the random fucking weeb on the internet. Mutations are exceedingly rare if they happen at all. Time DNA is copied, there's a big chance for mutation. There's copy errors all the time, and those could. Yeah. Depending on how you define beneficial, because the moment fit, but even are not Lego analogy, which I'm not going to play because it's too long. But yes, I found the uh, the Lego analogy, and we're going to fucking listen to it because you're fucking lazy so, yes, bitch. You need these microscopic changes in order to build big macroscopic changes. How else do you expect it to work, magic? Wait. Wait, wait, wait. So you're intermittent. Oh, I have to jump around everywhere. There it is. Or knowledge of what it's trying to build, because it isn't trying to build anything. It's just about what works in the moment, what helps any one individual survive and reproduce. Think about it like a pile of Legos. Only some of the bricks have all the pegs shaved off, and some of the bricks have all the holes filled in with glue. Only some of them are going to fit together properly. So if I just sit there and just one at a time pick a totally random Lego and try to stack it, and if it doesn't work, I toss it and grab another totally random Lego, eventually, by totally random picking, I would build a pretty big tower. And you could come along and say, aha, look, see, there must be some intelligent design here. They must have had a plan to build this beautiful tower. When really, the tower is just an emergent property of the random process of just stacking whatever random brick I could and throwing away the ones that I couldn't. So for you to point at the tower as as it is, and assume that something special is ignoring everything that it was and everything that it could be. It's just totally myopic to look at life this way. Okay, so we've actually listened to the argument. Now we're going to listen to your opinion on, on it before you can poison the well on that it's shit. Because it it's too long. Because it's too long. 14 minutes. We have to remember that every single generation is the next step in evolution. How to wire a human brain that's far more complicated than our best computers if it is a totally blind process with no goal or a brain? It can't. What are you gonna say? Brains? What then? Just because we haven't figured something out doesn't mean that it's magical. Evolution doesn't need any foreknowledge of what it's trying in the moment. What helps any one individual survive and reproduce? Think about it like a pile of Legos. Only some of. Okay, thirteen forty-five. Thirteen forty-five. That was literally one minute of your time, dude. And that was too long for you. Come on. Come the fuck on, dude. If the Legos are supposed to represent genes or physical traits. No, I think his Lego analogy, the bricks are supposed to represent individual mm. creatures. And if, if those... No, dude. He's talking about natural selection. He, he's defining that for you. Like, like, like you claimed earlier, he doesn't do. He's providing an analogy for natural selection. He's showing that he, that a complex structure can be built through random chance. So the structure is the tower, and the bricks are components of that tower. Okay? I know that might be a lot for you since one minute of your time is hard for you, but that's what he's trying to say by that. Have their nubs shaved off. They get thrown away. That creature is a mutant and no good. Same with any brick that has the. Not what he said. Whole side. Fit. Like again, again, all you are doing throughout this entire video is creating straw man arguments without actually presenting your audience with any of the context before poisoning the well. If you do, whenever you do show what you're reacting to it's after you've already poisoned the well with your straw man I, I, I hate talking like this because it's chuds like you which like cry which which like bitch about um cr bitch and cry and moan over straw man you're creating a straw man oh it's a logical fallacy logical fallacy and you're making me do that thanks for that Prick. Okay. Degenerate mutant thrown away. What he <sighs> does not mention in his analysis. Degenerate mutant. Perfect. Analogy, though, 
is that the vast majority of his Lego bricks would have their nubs shaved off or their holes filled in. He's not ever going to get a tower. It's not a very good analogy. Without the pro <laughs> What? Are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> What are you talking about? All he's making an he's making an analogy about complex structures being built over time through random chance. Like the amount of time is not the relevant factor here. Whether a the the the, the bricks that he's throwing away aren't mutants, and he literally goes into an explanation about how that is fucking wrong later on. Are you gonna actually play that? Are you actually gonna play so that? Yes, you need these microscopic changes in order to build big macroscopic changes. How else do you expect yes. it to work? Magic? So he agrees with John and Jane, but decides to go on this little rant to, I guess, try not to sound like he's agrees with what agreeing with them too much and again the agreeing with what the question is brought up how are you defining magic whole organisms kind of like the question is that's not a question dude like again you can understand the context in which he's using the word magic from the way he's discussing it and through social norms now if english is not your first language then i apologize for expecting you to understand english colloquialisms um i'm not being shitty with you right now like honestly if that's a struggle for you whatever but now you know that contextually speaking when people say what do you think it is magic that is a colloquialism which means that someone thinks that you believe in supernatural phenomenon rather than science you are believing in something that doesn't have a scientific explanation behind it that's what is implied by what he's saying now you can choose to dick write a dictionary but then I would just call you a dick writer, a dictionary dick writer. So, I mean, trying to help you pick out swatches that I can't even see. You can freaking see, John. Nobody cares, Forrest. Around here, a random event that kills random members of a population could have a variety of different effects or no effect at all. It's like Forrest Val, hang on, Valkai. Like Forrest Val, or that kills random members of a population could have a variety of different effects or no effect at all. It's like Forrest Val, hang on, Valkai. Like Forrest Valkai doing a reaction video. Two things. What? Could have a variety of different effects or no effect at all. It's like Forrest Val, hang on, Val Oh, that one's that, that, that sorry, that like one was Forrest just a joke. Valkai sorry. I, 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 no, like, I'm, I'm not, not being funny. I just didn't, didn't get that one at first. I understand that you were trying to use humor in your video essay. Two things. One, they're lying. No, they're not. At best, they're just being not very careful with their wording. But they're not lying. Most, if not all, mutations are bad. And most no, that's not true. Um. Ah. If you claim that they're all bad, then you, I, I, I better see a uh, link, uh, in your in your description or something on screen pop up, backing up your claim. Most, if not all, beneficial mutations are still reductive in nature. Standing for Truth has a lot of videos on this. I suggest, Forrest, if you watch this video, that you go to Standing for Truth and try to react to Are you- is this motherfucker getting his, uh, biology research from a YouTube video, by the way? creationist creationist clothing so you're you're you you are uh you you're recommending a apologet an apologetics uh, website you're, you're arguing for Christian apologetics, and of course you've got skulls on the screen. Yeah, no shit. Uh, young Earth creation. Uh, standing for truth. Darwin debunked. Ugh, my gosh. Donnie. Donnie who? Donnie Budinsky. 
All right, so Donny Davinsky, who are you? Degree. Finally, apologizing for the crusade. Uh oh, Donny Blodinsky degree. I couldn't have said this any better than uh, Google just did them. Um, I tried to look up for what degrees Donny Blodinsky has. Um, it looks like there aren't many great matches for your search. Why am I not surprised? So you're wanting me to trust a Christian apologetics YouTube channel founded by a person who has no knowledge or expertise in evolutionary biology or bioanthropology versus someone who is absolutely uh, qualified in their field talking about what they study for a living. Okay, bro. Um, again, show me you're working out instead of telling me to fucking look it up for myself. I'm not going to do your work for you, bullshit artist. Some of his videos. Maybe we shouldn't be throwing around words like cleanse from the population. Oh, fuck, I'm gonna be there like an hour over time today. It's kind of an unpleasant history with that sort of language. Especially for the evolutionists. They keep defining- What do you mean? Explain. What's an evolutionist, dude? What the fuck are you talking about? Like, seriously, the, the, this this weeb toad got a bunch of buzzwords and uh, thought terminating cl cliches from a cult website and thinks that he can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with an evolutionary biologist. And it is sad. Finding evolution and then saying that that's not evolution. And it's like they can't escape reality anymore, but if they can just convince enough people that blood isn't red, it's... Cr yeah, Forrest Valkai right now is uh, talking about... Um these creationists in general like he's reacted to a lot of them so this is a pattern within creationists they try to define they define the the uh, aspects of evolution and then claim that those aspects of evolution disprove evolution that's what Forrest is saying I wonder I wonder if Toad is going to understand that now or is going to make a stupid quip instead of directly engaging with the ideas Crimson then we'll be having a totally different, pointless conversation until we all just get so frustrated that we forget what we're talking about and just go our separate ways. Oh, the irony. Most of what he says really applies to himself. He keeps defining evolution as natural selection in order to- Not once in this entire video does he do that. If he did, you would show that clip in one, two, to say everything's evolution. That is not how it works. Again! John just admitted that evolution works. Again! Play that back! No, so you're not gonna- you're not able to actually prove your point. You're just going to make a claim of a logical fallacy without actually backing it up with anything that happens in the video. You- you don't understand how logical fallacies work. Why- why is he pretending to be Mega Man? I, I don't know. Um, I'm more fucking jazzed that he couldn't figure out how to, um, record audio on different fucking, on different fucking tracks. That's more funny to me. Um, and but yeah. Lots of small mutations can give a survival advantage in specific environments. Lots of small mutations can give a survival advantage in specific environments. That's how evolution works. And it's that's not evolution. That's the whole point of evolution. This First of all, evolution does not work. Second of all, that's... And don't try and fucking go, make me go to a fucking cult website again, please. Back up your facts with something, you know? Not evolution. Uh, uh, go back. This video is literally saying, I know animals evolve, they just don't. No, they literally did not say animals evolve. You are switching the use of evolution. You are- They literally did not say animals evolve. They literally did not say animals evolve. They literally did not say animals evolve. No, 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 I can do it. Give me a try. Yeah, case in point, right? So they have no idea. They literally works, say, just, do not say right. animals right. evolve. Offspring. So evolutionary theory. Selection is a process by which organisms with variation most suited to their local environment survive and leave more offspring. So your own like that. 
do, do you actually show this in, in here? This would be hilarious if it's in your own video. I'm going to be fucking laughing my head off if it is. Oh, no, it's not. Oh, you're not showing any of the relevant information in your video. You don't show any relevant information in the video because you just fucking lied through your teeth, my dude. You're a wheezy little liar, dude. Um, I'm sorry, but they are explaining a component of evolution here in their video, and they go on to explain it. Forrest is laughing because they're literally trying to debunk natural selection through idiotic arguments while also explaining that it works. That They're not intending to explain this, they're just doing it anyway. Because, like, truth speaks for its fucking self. ...saying they evolve, as in change over time, in order to say they evolve, as in descended from a common ancestor. Pizza type pizza- oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh, that takes me back. That takes me back. Oh, I can't remember anything about it, but, like, pizza time pizza? Far out. Hold on. I'm just making sure that the thing doesn't have a thing, but, like, pizza. Wait, are they still doing SpongeBob uh, SquarePants theories? Oh, love it. I love it. I absolutely love it. Yeah, that that was a rabbit hole. You are playing word games rather than doing science. That takes me back. Don't evolve. What are you are playing what? In word games rather than doing science. I can't believe this. I can't believe this. Everything that this motherfucker has done in his video, he's called out. He tried to call out. Um, Forest Valkai 4. Number one, poisoning the well. Literally, um, the to this toady motherfucker is prefacing everything with, um, what he wants his viewers to, uh, take from it without actually letting Forrest speak for himself before reacting to the content. Number two, he is creating a straw- he continually makes strawmans about Forest Valkai's arguments, um, which I went back and had a look. You can- I linked the video, there's a link to the video in his description, I'll be linking it on YouTube, down in the doodly-doo, you can check it right now, all of the links that I've looked up for here, except for the fucking cult one, I'm not gonna put that in there. Um... Forrest has not made any of the claims that Toady Boy has made. Um, definition of a straw man. Um, He's also made equivocations between evolu- he, he's- he made the straw man claim that Forrest Valkai is equivocating natural selection with- with evolution, something he does not do once in this video, um, while equivocating evolution with, um, uh, fuck, what was it called? Hosey, you put it down. You put it up there. Um... Ding, 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 ding. Where'd it go? <sighs> common descent. Yeah, common descent. Like, you made the equivoc like, uh, equivocation between common descent and evolution. Like, while making- while trying to claim someone else is doing an equivocation. And right now, you are making the claim that Forrest Valkai is the one trying to play word games while continually trying to dick ride the dictionary of the fucking definition of the word magic. This is priceless. This is priceless. It's a gift, and it also needs a citation. Whoops. Don't evolve. What are we doing? <laughs> Evolutionists oh. have tried to propose various genetic explanations. For clarity's sake, there is one section where they talk about gene duplication, mm. and I'm going to skip over that because, I don't know, I'll pass that one on to Stan. Okay, uh, da, 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 da. And result You know what? Um, fuck this dude. In gene amplification, which is... anymore but if they can just convince enough people that blood isn't red it's crimson then we'll be having a totally different gene specific environment here we go virtually all the real life examples show a loss of genetic information not again sorry 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 um yeah that's it for this uh that's it for this react um for this chud because like that that did it for me um 
to propose various genetic experts. Literally, literally, but my dude, like, you could have learned something, but this is, he, he could have learned something right now, but this is his response to actually learning so something. There is one section where they talk about gene duplication, and I'm going to skip over that because, I don't know, I'll pass that one on. To you don't know? Well, I'm going to show you why he wants to skip over that one, because it actually explains how genetic information can be duplicated, how mutations can add information to a fucking gene! <laughs> because it destroys your argument, you dumb fuck! There again! John just admitted that evolution works. Again, play that back! And while lots of small mutations can give a survival advantage in specific environments, lots of small mutations can give a survival advantage in specific environments. That's how evolution works! That's the whole point of evolution! This video is literally saying, I know animals evolve, they just don't evolve. What are we doing? Evolutionists have tried to propose various genetic explanations, like gene duplication, but they're putting their faith in a process that has never actually been observed. We have observed gene duplication, and lots of other genetic- Yeah. So, basically, this one- f this whole section of the argument, um, is fucking weeb chud decides to skip because it completely destroys his argument that um, mutation causes data loss, information loss, which is just not true. Um, it's, we've observed gene duplication, like that, that happens. Mutation is a change, and that can be loss of information, that can be a transfer of information, and it can be an addition of information. That is what mutation means. You dumb fuck. Mechanisms for evolution. We've observed them countless- Also, like, complaining about, um, not defining what beneficial- what a beneficial mutation means, and then just blasé talking about bad mutations as being a common thing without defining that at all. Like, fuck you, dude. Times. I have observed them in cell bio and microbio and genetics labs all throughout my college career. When was the last time that you observed the creation of a human from dust or a rib, John? What's gene duplication? It's when a whole gene accidentally gets copied and then mutates to become another new gene. Nice story. Have scientists ever seen that happen? Nope, never. It's literally how PCR tests work. PCR stands for polymerase chain reaction, and it results in gene amplification, which is a term for when a gene is duplicated so much that you can't even keep track of it. It duplicates hundreds or thousands. So, in your video about this guy, about... In your video about Forrest lying for Darwin, something like, again, like, he never does, um, Darwin, again, we have built, we have moved past Darwin, uh, when it comes to evolutionary biology, and, uh, bioanthropology, and all of those things. The, the, the theory of evolution has moved past Darwin, like, Darwin's dead, dude. Like, get over it. Um, this is his field of study. And he completely destroys their argument about mutation always being a loss of information here. And you just decide to, I don't know, skip that because... Because why again? Because why? 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 Gene duplication, and I'm going to skip over that because, I don't know. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I'm gonna skip over that 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 absolute debunking of creationist bullshit because I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Fuck, man. <laughs> Fucking hell. Sometimes, and I run so many PCR tests, I can do it in my sleep. Now, granted, PCR is something that's done under like laboratory conditions, so you could argue that that's not something that happens in nature. But just for funsies, I just searched Google Scholar for gene duplication, and I found this completely random. Just one of the top ones that came up. This is a study from 2012, published in the journal Science, which is one of the most prestigious science journals in the world, about how evolution, by way of several mechanisms, including duplication, was observed in real time in salmonella bacteria. It, it literally took me under one minute to find this. Is that the problem? Did John and James not have access? Well, the problem is, is that one minute is too long for people <laughs> like Jane and John and uh, this fucking chud. Access to Google Scholar. And most examples of supposed evolution in action involve things like chemical pathways and small changes in proteins. But <sighs> how do you get a fin to turn into a limb and then a human hand? Well, that's an easy one. It's through chemical pathways and small changes in proteins. I dare you to define what a Hox gene is, John. They tell interesting stories about how it must have just happened. But I can't find any evidence it actually happened. So, just so we're clear, you do not believe in a process that we can all literally watch happening with our own eyes. Because the countless, well-documented, direct observations of genetic changes in response to selection pressures, both in the laboratory and out in the field, are just not sufficient evidence for you. But you do believe in a supernatural entity that exists outside of the confines of space and time that created all life on this planet exactly as it is, just like that. Because you read about it in a book once. I mean, I do, but, like, I don't think that that's, um, antithetical to the idea of, uh, evolution, because I'm not a fucking creationist cultist. 
Got it. Makes total sense. So a typical mutation removes information. Also, I didn't say didn't talk about this before, but I just realized that she's wearing a fedora. Why? Um, when was when was their video made? By the way, I just really really want to fucking look this up. Hold on. Um, what was it called? It was uh, natural section. Uh, was it evolution? Um, the bonking evolution with John and Jane. Ah, why is it so big? <laughs> Kids Club for Jesus. Yeah, this is uh, shown to kids because, yeah. The full movie, February 2021, 2019, 2016. I'm going to say probably about 2015, so about um, seven seven to ten years ago. Let's let's give it like ten years. This is a ten-year-old video. Okay, okay, that's about that's about the time in which people still thought uh, fedoras were cool. I think. Well, it was like twenty three. Yeah, it was twenty three of the time. So. But only a mutation that can add information really explain how philosophers came from fish. And if you think about it, natural selection can't create anything. It can only deselect by killing whole individuals with traits that are already present in the population. Wow, you're right. You can only select something that is already present. How can nature ever add information to some DNA by subtracting some of what is already there? What? I mean, that's literally explained by... That. You just explained that! You said a typical mutation removes information, which, no, it doesn't, but whatever. That would mean that other mutations add information, right? You literally just said some mutations add information, but where does the information come from? Okay, here we go! Here we go! Like... Wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up! Dude, 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 dude! Hey, 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 what the fuck is your name again? Uh, Toad, Toad! Let me do you a favor here. An actual thing you can criticize in this video. Let's have a look. Let's. I'm going to roll this back, and I'm going to show how much it pisses me off when people decry dictionaries. And he is doing the same thing right now. No, it doesn't. But whatever. That would mean that other mutations add information, right? You literally. So what he's doing here is he's saying that since she since she said um, that a typical mutation subtracts information it would imply that it subtracts but she didn't actually say or make an argument for the fact that it uh ad adds information so you could criticize this one part of the video for making a bad argument unfortunately the rest of the video completely debunks your creationist cult bullshit just said some mutations add information but where does the information come from like did you not think that we were going to listen to the whole sentence great question and speaking of information here's another question evolutionists have not even come close to answering how could chemicals from early earth wait for it wait for it to be answered uh, let him cook let him cook information that's the first question you've asked that's actually a question and the answer is easy as crap it's called chemical evolution and you can do it in a jar simple naturally occurring molecules self-assemble into complex organic molecules under remarkably mundane conditions with impressive regularity all the time we found amino acids on asteroids in space what did your god start making life up there too but he forgot what he was doing halfway through and gave up or did that one come to kill the dinosaurs as well and it just bounced off of earth and took a little bit of organic matter with it this is the most frustrating part of these john and jane videos just because you can ask a question doesn't mean that there isn't an answer but the biggest problem yeah I might have yep. natural selection being able to create new kinds of animals. It's found right here in our biology textbook. Let me see if I can find it. But how will you be able to find it if you can't see, John? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, but like I'm hearing the I'm I'm just imagining Garfield saying this, like I'm just imagining every time he says, you can't see, John, like this being it being like a Garfield uh, comic strip from like, I'm sorry, John. Like, some eldritch her horrific Garfield has torn out his eyeballs or something like that. Sorry, I, I just... But how will you be able to find it if you can't see, John? Yes. <laughs> how evolution can't possibly work because it relies on death, but death only exists. Hey, hey, another one, another one. Um, Toady, Toady boy. Um, you can criticize him for not showing the entire thing within context while uh, having said th this this could you could argue that this is um, a contextless argument at least it's not a straw man argument and it's not poisoning the well but it is removing context from an argument and maybe it would be better to not have that in there I don't really give a fuck because he's debunked everything else in the video I'm more likely to trust the opinion of someone who actually studied evolutionary biology and uh, bioanthropology like those two fields are like 
That's that's the theory of evolution. Um, yeah, but you can keep believing in cult bullshit if you like. So, natural selection has no intelligence and can't even select what's happening on the genetic level. It can only subtract from what is already present in DNA, and it relies on that to create new kinds of life. Wow. I'm really starting to see that natural selection really doesn't have the power that evolution needs, you know, to turn fish into apes, and then people. How many do you think? Interesting fact. Sorry. I don't think I can find it, but... I list. I I literally watched a YouTube short. Let me see if I can find it. This is, I I I just found this interesting. Um. Oh what? No, I'm search. I'm trying to search my. The fuck is that in the background? I, I, like, paused it on this weird place, and now it looks like she's got her foot foot in the air under a blanket. What the fuck? What is that? What is that in the background? What is that whole thing? I'm so confused. Also, why is John having a orgasm in the background? And why is she... What, what is happening right now? That's amazing. But I'm going to find the, fi the fish... The fish video. Ah, perfect. Do 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 la da dee la do la da doom. What conclusion did the great biologist Stephen Jay Gould draw from? Oh my gosh! How do I? Internet? No. Why is it so quiet? Oh, fuck. Um 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 um. um. Sorry, I'm gonna have to do this after uh, because YouTube is annoying. Yes, Matt Walsh is a fucking idiot. Oh, I clicked on a Xanderhol video. Fuck that. Oh, now my now my <laughs> now my algorithm's fucked. No. What did the great biologist we go. Stephen Jay Gould draw from a lifetime study of fish? Oh, yeah. They've got any legs. <laughs> They can feel no love. No, that they... <laughs> that there is no such thing as a fish. A fish has no biological meaning. Biologically speaking, a salmon is more related to, say, a camel than it is to a hagfish. Like, there are lots yeah. of things that fly, right. like a bumblebee flies, a vulture flies, and there are flying lizards. They're, they're not all birds. No. But so, we call things so... that swim in the sea fish, and actually, Biologically, evolutionarily, they have absolutely nothing to do with each other at all. So, I've so I found that quite interesting. Just, just thought I'd put that there. But like, again, can we just like focus on how glorious this picture is right here? This, this glorious picture of her leg in the air with a blanket under it, having some weird sort of like farting sensation while he's coming in the background, just cooming it up. Um, and he's also there in the foreground looking at his phone as if, I mean, like, I thought he couldn't see, but... I wish, I really wish that anything at all could make the two of you think, but I just don't have high hopes for it. Overall, I give this video a science teacher challenge level 1 out of 10. This is their worst one yet. They didn't ask any fun or interesting questions. They didn't bring up any new or exciting points. They tried to debunk evolution by defining it like eight different times. Also, I'm probably gonna cut out that whole obnoxious sermon there at the end, but they did manage to squeeze this little gem right into the middle of it. How would you define religion? I know this from class. It's basically defined as a system of beliefs. Right, so would evolution qualify as a religion? Because, you know, faith and belief and religion are all bad things, except when they're specifically in reference to young earth creationism. Honestly, this is just the laziest argument of them all. They really can't see past their own. No wait, 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 wait. So that wouldn't they. Would they. Did they try to make the argument that science is wrong because it's a belief, but then they believe in God? Oh, to realize how quickly that's going to bite them in the butt because when oh, they try to pull science down to the level, fucking they headache take from this shit. Evidence, and then it's just another religion. What they're arguing is that faith is a bad thing, and that. But yeah, support the original creator, um, which is Forrest Falcon. He's uh, amazing. I'm going to pop him in there. I think that there was someone else that we were reacting to, but I can't remember right now. Um, that is all I have time for today, so, 
until next time, take care of yourself, take care of yourself, and take care of someone else. Uh, love you all. Bye-bye.